Shalom, shalom, Israel. Most high in Christ bless. Happy Sabbath. Can you hear me? Baraka Israel, Zakaya, CC Israel, Yaikov Israel, Nadera, Oni, Facebook. Uh, Benjamin Israel, Deshaun, Abishai, Quell Israel, all praises, all praises. So we were having a lot of technical difficulties. So that was the delay. Um, seemed like someone had control over the page. Uh, we relinquish it back. A lot of uh, changes had to be made to the page. So um, if there's any disruptions, the class may get shut down. So that was the, sorry for the delay, but we were experiencing technical difficulties as far as logging in and starting. But um, it seems now like everything's fixed. Is everything fixed? Okay. The tech team says everything is fixed. So without further ado, I am here for you. Most high in Christ bless. Happy Sabbath. Shalom. Glad to be with you. Uh, let's make up for the lost time. Um, uh leadership can me and andrew get our wrenches back i don't know how to do that i don't i don't know i, I don't know um who gave you who gave you that i don't know i don't i don't deal with that i'm not tech support just contact who assigned that for you Um, I have no idea. I, I don't understand nothing about tech support. Please forgive me. All I do is scream at the men when I can't get on or when the class is disrupted. That's it. That's all I know how to do. I know nothing. And I just know we were having difficulty now. We thought the page was being controlled, but it seems like everything is good. Um... Where was I? Where was I? Oh, oh, oh. Um, I got emails about dialogue on the chat. And I, I don't know if y'all know it. I'm looking at three different platforms. Facebook, IUIC ASAP, IUIC in the classroom. When all is said and done at the end of the week, it's almost 20,000, close to 20,000, between 15,000, 20,000 viewers in total. So some of you think that I'm only on one page. It's three across the board. And we just got rid of the Periscope. Remember, the Periscope used to be four. Okay? See, I got to understand. It's not just you typing on one page. It's three different platforms that I'm watching and I'm monitoring. And sometimes I may miss some stuff. Uh, I have people complaining that... Uh, of dialogue back and forth online that was affecting their walk in this truth. And let me explain to you what I mean by that. There are some people that's not with an IUIC school, and you always hear us say, if they're not with an IUIC school, either they can't make it, they haven't made it yet, they're still new, they're watching online. Online class is open to Everyone, everyone, okay? So if someone is not in a school and they're watching online and you're in a school, don't disrespect somebody online because there's people who we didn't allow into the school, but we tell them, watch online. There's people who have been uh, reprimanded or disciplined, and while they're out the school, we tell them, watch online. 
That's not for any of you to chastise them, to argue them, or make it difficult for them to learn. Okay? Let me use me for instance. There's people that make me sick, but I'm not going to stop them from watching in line. As long as they don't disrupt my class, I'm not going to stop them. Okay? Y'all know how I feel about uh, Bezalel. I don't like him. But if he's watching online, I don't care because there's always a chance he could repent, and I'm not going to take that from him. He may be watching one time, looking at me like he hate my guts, and that's fine. But the word, something may come out in the word that makes him change his mind. Yes, um, y'all know from watching me, the devout watchers know I make it very clear all the time how I feel about him. But the, the opportunity for him to repent is not up to me. The Lord may touch his heart. He may decide one time. He may hear something in class, and the devil come off of him, and he want to get right. I'm not interfering with that. I am not interfering with that. That is not my job. The same way the door of repentance was open unto me, I open it to everyone. Okay, and I only say him, there's a lot more that make me sick. I only say him because he's the grimiest, slimiest person, traitor that we had amongst us that was affiliated with us and went to the enemy to side with them. But I don't control his salvation. That's up to the most high. So um, if he decides one day, if the most high takes the veil off of his heart and opens the door of repentance to him, I don't want him not to be able to repent because of my anger towards him or my personal feeling. This is not the Deacon Asaph show. This, I, I'm not here to put on a show for you. I'm here to open the door of salvation to get people to repent. So I open the door to everyone, whoever want to listen. You don't have to like me. I don't care. Okay? I just want the word of God to go out. So that being said, give me... Romans chapter 10, verse 1. So you'll see my point of view, and you'll see why I speak this way. And you'll see where this is coming from. That it's scriptural. Okay, I don't have no personal grievance against anybody. There's people who've wronged me in the truth or did things wrong to Israel United in Christ, and I am upset about that, but it can change like that once they repent. Okay, I'm not closing the door of repentance to anybody. And as far as Israel United in Christ, Bezalel is our greatest enemy since I've been in this truth for 20-something years. He is the greatest enemy, not only to Israel United in Christ, but to the whole Israelite movement, because he's the only person who you ever seen sit down with the enemy. Put his picture up in case there's maybe new people online that didn't see him go to the SPLC and don't know that he sat with that ugly, fat woman. Okay? He used to be a part of Israel United in Christ. He sat down with the enemy and called us a cult and told a whole bunch of lies because of money, because he didn't make money with us. Okay, he may repent one day. He may say, look, you know, uh, the devil is off me and I want to get my mind right. I'm not closing the door of repentance to him and he makes me sick to my stomach, but I don't control his destiny. I don't control, I don't condemn no one. I don't condemn no one to hell or to death. That is not my job. That is not my office. But him being the devil that he is, maybe the uh, Christ may enter into his heart and open the door of forgiveness to him. I don't want it ever on my hands that I'm the reason why he didn't repent. You could take that devil off. Take the devil off. So I want you to understand my thought process. Give me Romans chapter 10, verse 1. This is the book of Romans chapter 10 and verse 1. Brethren, my heart's desire and prayer to God for Israel Say is, that again. Brethren, my heart's desire. This is what I desire. Read on. And prayer to God for Israel. This is what I pray to God for the 12 tribes of Israel. Read on. Is that they might be saved. I want them to be saved. I didn't come here to condemn nobody. Okay, because I, I wasn't born uh, with, keeping the commandments. I came from darkness to the light. And I'm still trying to get myself right. Is that a t-shirt? I came from darkness to the light, and I'm still trying to get myself right. Okay? I'm still a work in progress. So I don't condemn nobody. 
Read it again. Brethren, my heart's desire and prayer to hey, God. Hey, Adam, even Judah Mac too. I wish the devil would come off of him. I'm speaking to Adam on Facebook. I wish the devil would come off of him, and I wish he would get his mind. I, I always said I never had nothing personal with him. I never had no beef with him. I thought he was cool till the devil jumped on him. Okay, and a lot of y'all was defending him in the beginning. Even when I told y'all, fall back, leave this dude alone. He got the devil on him. And little by little, he, he showed the way. Where's all that energy that y'all had for him before? He proved he's the devil. You saw he did to that wicked woman that walked by the, the, the Phoenix, Arizona camp with spandex pants on. Okay, he corrupted people. He's responsible for the destruction of people who was in this truth. But me, I understand the scriptures. It, yes, for anybody who's new to this and don't know who Judah Mack is, he's a member that used to be with us. This is what he's doing in music videos now. He's flipping us the finger. Okay, I wish the devil would come off of him and he would get his mind right. His sidekick in the back also. Okay, I'm, I don't condemn nobody. That's not my job. I don't have no hatred for nobody. We can take him off. Bye-bye. Um, this is how I feel. Read it again. Brethren, my heart's desire and prayer to God for Israel is that they might be saved. That's what's going on in my head. I want people to get saved. When I come here every Friday night, it is to save lives. There's nothing so personal inside of me that I, I'm losing sleep over these men. Okay? I, I sleep good. With, I, I don't think about these men. Only when I can use them as an example, I bring them up. Okay? And y'all never care me going to anybody else because contrary to popular belief, nobody has done any damage to us where, where if, if anything, we're in a better place from the attacks. You know, so it's not a problem to me. So, this is how I feel. Read it one more time. Brethren, my heart's desire and prayer to God for Israel is that they might be saved. I want the brothers to be saved, the sisters to be saved. All the devils that attacked us, okay? One thing I've learned from Christ is, to, to, is compassion. And he went on the cross and died for salvation to all the Israelites, and that's what I want. Read on. For I bear them record that they have a zeal of God. All of them speak about God with a certain level of zeal. Read on. But not according to knowledge. But they don't have no knowledge. So I praise the Lord for the knowledge he's bestowed upon me so that I can move people's lives, so that I am an asset to the rebuilding of the kingdom and to the deliverance of people from darkness to light to get their life right. These people have a zeal of God, but not according to knowledge. Read on. For they, being ignorant of God's righteousness. Because they don't understand the measure of righteousness according to the scriptures. Read on. And going about to establish their own righteousness. They make things up. That's the problem. That's why there's division in Israel. That's why there's arguing. That's why there's strife. That's why there's different groups. They, those people make up their own righteousness, read on, have not submitted themselves unto the righteousness of God. So they don't submit themselves to what God says righteousness is. Okay? They do not submit themselves to what God says righteousness is. And the first key to righteousness is forgiveness. You're going to see that in the scriptures. Uh, watch this, watch this. Watch this. I'm going to show you something. Uh, give me. Uh, uh, I think it's. Uh, Second Corinthians chapter two, verse uh, eight. Second Corinthians chapter two, verse eight. 
This is the book of 2 Corinthians, chapter 2 and verse 8. So that you understand why I take this stance. Go ahead. Wherefore, I beseech you that ye would confirm your love toward him. What I want is for us, he said, I beseech you to confirm your love toward him. Read on. For to this end also did I write, that I might know the proof of you, whether ye be obedient in all things. I want all of the viewing audience to be obedient in all things, not emotional in all things, not angry in all things, not uh, 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 with malice in all things, where you want harm to come to people. Read on. To whom ye forgive anything, I forgive also. I, it's not that uh, much of a big deal to me where I'm like, I'll never forgive him. I'll never forgive him. No, it's not that big. Read it again. To whom ye forgive anything, I forgive also. Y'all squash the beef. I'm down with squashing the beef and bringing the peace. Read on. For if I forgave anything, to whom I forgave it. For your sakes forgave I it. For, For your sakes forgave I it. Because I care about you. That's why I need to learn compassion and forgiveness. Read on. In the person of Christ. In the person, in the image of Christ is how I've learned compassion and I've learned forgiveness. So no, with all the evil that has been done, if, what I want is for peace to come. I'm not mad where... If someone is since genuinely reaching out to create peace, I'm going to shun them because of the person that I'll become in Christ. Can we read it one more time? To whom ye forgive anything, I forgave also. If, if the person is genuine about repairing the breach and the forgiveness can come for it, I'm in agreement with it. That's what Paul is saying. Read on. For if I forgave anything, to whom I forgave it, for your sakes forgave I it. I'm for you, for the body, for the nation of Israel. I'm about peace, no beef, and forgiveness. If the person is genuine and then they're sincere. I'm not going to hold a grudge because I can harm the body with that mindset, with that spirit. And the Lord will remove me from the office of teaching the people and edifying them and giving them an example of what Christ stands for. Read on. In the person of Christ. Lest Satan should get an advantage of us. What? Lest Satan should get an advantage of us. If, 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 if I'm here angry and mad all the time about an issue that I don't want to let it go and a person wants to fix it, what will happen? Read on. Lest Satan should get an advantage of us, for we are not ignorant of his devices. I'm not ignorant of the devil's devices. What the devil wants is for you to keep that beef going, to keep that anger going, to keep that violence going. Watch this, watch this. Uh, go to the stuff that I sent you in the middle of the week. I'm going to show you something. I'm going to show you something. Yes, the articles. I'm going to show you something about not forgiving and letting Satan get advantage, take, take the advantage of you. Okay, can they see that? I didn't know who this guy was. I found out about him because he was violently killed on Instagram Live. I watched the life leave his body while a man pumped 10, it sounded like 12 shots when you count, right in his chest while he was on Instagram Live and it went viral. Okay, it says California rapper Indian Red Boy shot and killed while on Instagram Live. Okay, slide it up so you can see him. Okay, he was only 21 years old. Slide it up. Another young life is unfortunately gone too soon, according to multiple outlets and police personnel. 21-year-old rapper Indian Red Boy was shot and killed on Thursday, July 8, while ins inside of his car. There are multiple videos circulating the internet as we speak that shows now late man talking to a friend on Instagram live at the time and then getting shot while right there in the car. He's laughing and choking one minute and then all you hear is pop, 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 pop. And you're seeing him get hit in his chest 
live on camera for everybody to see. He was assassinated right there, and somebody put the video up. According to LTTI Goats of Hawthorne Police Department, authorities were called to the 14100 block of Chadron Avenue at 4.10 p.m. local time. CBS Los Angeles confirmed this as well. Los Angeles County Fire Department added that the fatally shot man was pronounced dead at the scene of the crime. You watched him begging for life. His friend was like, what the hell is going on? Where are you? And he's trying to talk, but you can see the breath leaving his I can't play the video here. YouTube will strike the channel down. And I wouldn't play it anyway. I would not play it. It was just, it was just crazy to see that man lose his life like that on camera. The coroner's office identified the deceased shooting victim as the rapper whose real name is Zarel Dejan Rivera. It appears to have been a walk-up shooting. And he appears to have been targeted, Getz said, before adding that he, it, he appeared to be a gang member. Authorities are still looking for the suspects who pulled the trigger. As we mentioned before, there is a video footage of the actual shooting taking place. However, we, don't, we won't be sharing that here. CBS Los Angeles did, however, capture video of Rivera's family at the scene, understandably upset about the tragic ordeal. Get that video there. Yes, the family was going back and forth with the police because they were trying to run to him, and uh, it just was bad. Now, let's see if we can work a little magic with all There's a homicide investigation underway right now in Hawthorne. Let's go to Desmond Shaw in Sky 9 with the latest. Jeff and Susie, we're off of Chandran Avenue in the city of Hawthorne, and you can see Hawthorne PD. Uh, they are wrapping up their investigation. They're still taking some photographs. We watched the coroner just uh, wheel the body away. It is a male in his 20s uh, that was shot and killed inside this car. There are a lot of bullet holes inside that windshield. We zoomed in earlier and uh, saw that. So they responded earlier this evening to reports of a man who was shot, shot in the face, and died at the scene. So again, coroners just wrapped up their investigation. We're watching the family over here on the side, very distraught as you can imagine. I'll widen out and show you as well. Hawthorne PD has been having some kind of issues with crowd control you down here on this a corner. Big crowd Our foreman was fighting the police. It was his family because they were in shock. He was talking on Instagram with his friend and they just watched him get shot the life leave out of him. Him begging for help to come to him. It was a very horrible, horrible video. Horrible. Anybody, nobody could watch that video and not be moved by what they saw. You can see the life leaving his body as he's begging for help. Um, you can take that off. You can take that off. You can take that off. Now, when I first sent him this stuff, it was in the middle of the week. And more articles were sent to me concerning the shooting. Um, and what I found out is they're saying that he was shot because he was making mockery of the death, the memorial that they had set up for the rapper Nipsey Hussle. That's his name. Okay, could you, could you Google that? That was a horrible, horrible video for any of you who saw it. His name is Indian Red. Rap, put, rapper shot for, for disrespecting Nipsey Hussle, who's dead. He was killed by a wicked uh, demon. So click that one, the first one right there. The first one right there, the game claims. Because the rapper, The Game, did a record that sounds similar to what took place about this little boy getting killed. 
So they were like, yo, did you have any parts with it? It says the game claims his disrespecting Nipsey Hussle lyric wasn't about Indian Red Boy. So this is what's circulating now. Game is a very popular rapper, and he had just released a track speaking about people, someone getting shot for killing Nipsey Hussle, for disrespecting Nipsey Hussle. Put it up. So the game had this to say. One day after facing backlash for rapping some lyrics before believed to be directed as slain California rapper Indian Red Boy, the game stepped forward to clarify his bars. On Tuesday, July 13, Game jumped on Instagram and said that his lyric bars, which he rapped disrespecting Nip, the type of SH you niggas get killed for, were not about Indian Red Boy, a person people said vandalized a Nipsey Hussle mural. Understand, I meant no disrespect to no pirates, no bloods, no L.A., Niggas, no gangbangers, period. Game said in the video speaking on Indian Red Boy's situation. Number one, RIP to the homie, love to his whole family, his close homies, the whole Inglewood family, and all the pirates, of course, the world, period. Elaborating further, the 1992 artist said that the bars he spit to his Instagram Live audience were old ones. I've been wrote those bars. In my phone since May or April, he, the Compton Raptor revealed. Yesterday, I decided to put it out on the live. Bad timing on my behalf. I feel, niggas feel like I disrespected somebody, but it's really just bad timing on me. I'm going to get with the big homies, some of the little homies, and I'm going to get the Bloods family and help bury blood and throw some chips to his funeral. The lyrics in question are bars games let loose during a Monday Instagram live session. And then he raps all white Air Force Ones, niggas coming through the hood with them Air Force guns. We got them drags, then the billboards disrespecting Nip, the type of ish you niggas get killed for. We not going to stand for the disrespect. Get this 45 bell press against your neck. So when was Nipsey Hussle killed? Do you remember? Can you look it up? Huh? It was last year? Has a year passed yet? It seems like it was more than that. Twenty nineteen. So it's over two years that this man been dead. And something y'all don't understand about the music industry, a lot of times people want to come up, they disrespect other rappers. Now, that was a stupid thing. If he did desecrate his memorial and if he did disrespect this man who died, but he didn't deserve death for it. And this is how black people are. They're unforgiving. They're ungodly. They're monsters. To go and shoot that little, that's a little boy. When he died, what was he, like 18 when he died? Because he's 20, he just turned 21 now. So he's a little kid. So somebody goes and shoots him up that violently before the whole world. And I believe the most high let it get captured on film for a reason. To show you how low our people have become. To show how low, that's why I read the scriptures, we are not ignorant of Satan's devices. Satan takes advantage of us when we don't forgive. Okay? And this is a hard thing for black people to understand, to wrap around their head. And this is what gives Satan power. Can we read that scripture again? The book of 2 Corinthians, chapter 2 and verse 11. Lest Satan should give... Verse before that. Verse 10. To whom you forgive anything, I forgive also. To whom you forgive anything, I forgive also. Read on. For if I forgave anything, to whom I forgave it, for your sake... I'm learning how to forgive for the sake of the nation. If y'all watch me as your teacher hold on to a grudge, you will think that that's okay. 
But I'm showing you what happens when forgiveness is not taught to our people. That guy was killed alive. And you know, it's crazy. The dude that took his life, he doesn't understand God. The scriptures say, he that live by the sword shall die by the sword. You're not murdering somebody, and you're just going to go off into the sunset. You seal your own death warrant when you shot that little kid up. Okay? A lot of y'all believe he that, that was no payback. That was no payback. You did Nipsey Hussle and injustice by coming after him. And, and, and if that rapper game did, if he's sincere in what he said, all praises. But if he put those lyrics out behind that, he just messed up his position with the Most High also. Okay, because people were coming at him on social media almost like he was condoning what he, and then he cleared it up. Read it again. To whom ye forgive anything. I forgive also. He said, if you forgive, if you let it go, I let it go. Why? Read on. For if I forgave anything to whom I forgave it, for your sakes. I'm letting it go because I care about the people. It's just like these beefs with the rappers. You had Tupac. You had uh, Biggie Smalls. You had men involved who never met these people and were ready to kill. For the, That's how black people are. You're very emotional, you're very uh, unforgiving, you're very malicious, and you just want to see blood. And the most I let that unravel right before our face because y'all don't understand God. Y'all are more in tune with Satan than you are with God. That's why it says this. Read on. For your sakes forgave I it in the person of Christ. I learned forgiveness because I'm taking on the person that Christ has manifest himself to be before the whole world. He is the author and the finisher of our faith. So we learn, yes, we used to hold a grudge. Yes, we used to want to get people back. But we learn forgiveness through the person who Christ has manifest himself to us to be. The world is not going to teach you that because the world has rejected Christ. That's why they have a white man with blonde hair who blue eyes who looks like the same person that enslaved you. There's no forgiveness from that, from believing in a white man with blonde hair and blue eyes. Because the same people that enslaved you never forgave you. Is that the, like one of my hottest t-shirts? Is that like one of my hottest t-shirts? I'm ready to open a t-shirt. The same people that enslaved you never forgave you. And that's why we in the conditions we're in now. That's why nothing can get right for us. That's why nothing won't change for us. That's why life is so difficult. Because the peace, same people that enslaved you never forgave you. So they put up a different person for Christ that has no forgiveness for you. That's why Paul made it clear I'm forgiving things because of the person that Christ is. And we got to learn that person and become it. Or else we'll hold on to a grudge and it'll be back and forth and we'll kill each other off. We don't. Lest Satan should get an advantage of us. For we are not ignorant of his devices. When you hold on to a grudge, when you hold on to anger, Satan feeds, he thrives on that. You give him power. You glorify him. So that's why he said we're not ignorant of his. Next time you're mad at somebody, think about why you're mad. Think, is it necessary to harbor your anger? It ages you. Okay, it ages you. Think about when you feel good and think about when you're angry. It breaks you down. Not only are you feeding into the devil and you're giving Satan the advantage, you're breaking yourself down also with anger. And a lot of you, that's what that's all you know is I'm mad and I'm gonna get you back and I don't care. Read the Satan, read that part again, let Satan. Lest Satan should get an advantage of us. Because you've given Satan the advantage. 
And that's why Satan is so powerful now because of a simple thing. A lot of you do not know how to forgive. A lot of you do not know how to let things go. A lot of you want blood. A lot of you want revenge. A lot of you want to cause harm. A lot of you have come, if you've come into this truth and you haven't become the person that Christ is that laid down his life to give other people life, what happened? Read it again. Let Let's Satan should get an advantage of us. Satan has taken advantage of you, and the Bible is of no profit to you. Read on. For we are not ignorant of his devices. And you're ignorant of the devil's device. Read on. Furthermore, when I came to Troas to preach. I'm sorry, let that go. Give me. Oh. First Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 18. When I'm speaking about forgiveness, I'm talking about our own people. Our own people. You can forgive the nations all you want. God ain't changing the judgment that's coming to them. Okay? And let me just explain something to you real quick, because people always, that Christian part always comes up. Do we have to forgive the white man? Has he has he done things? Let's just be honest here. Because I'm not getting on you, Judah Lemba, but a lot of people like to type ask what you ask. He put, Do we have to forgive the other nations for what they've done to us? Uh you you moved his whole statement away. I know I'm supposed to not hate my people and forgive them. I'm with that, even though it's difficult to do. How can we forgive the other nations when they have not paid for the damage they've done to us? Has any of them came to us and said they're sorry? And with the sorry, what have they done to make our life better? If God lets them off the hook, then he is not a man of his word. They're going to pay. There's nothing you could do. A lot of people come into this truth and they say, oh, I'm not listening to IUIC because they, they're racist. This got nothing to do with racism. This has to do with right versus wrong. The Most High is going to get them. There's nobody that's going to stop his hand. Why should we pay for what we did wrong and they get a clean slate? That makes no sense. And again, like I said, I don't hate nobody. I'm not sitting here with hatred. It's just right is right and wrong is wrong. The scriptures say the cup that we drank, they have to drink. So you could get your Christian kumbaya. We forgive you. We love you. Come and hug us. That God going to tell you, move out the way or die with them. They're going to get judged. There's nothing you can do to stop it. It's written in the scriptures that they'll be bound in chains with fetters of irons. They're kings, they're nobles. None of you can stop it. So y'all can get mad at us all you want. The judgment is going down. Meet me in the club. It's going down. <laughs> hey, y'all not stopping it. Okay, they get in it. Not only are they getting it, can we go to Revelation chapter 18, verse 4? Watch this, watch this, watch this. For you, forgive the other nations, people. The book of Revelation chapter 18 and verse 4. And I heard another voice from heaven saying, come out of her, my people. God says, move away from them. That's what God is saying. Get away from them. Because you got people kumbaya with your Christian heart and we forgive you. Meanwhile, they've done nothing worthy of forgiveness. I don't see none of them saying, yo, let's fix the communities we destroyed. Let's fix the, the, the places that we've reaped the benefits of. We've drained them of their resources. We've called them monkeys. We've disrespected them. We've stopped them from getting good jobs, good food, clean drinking water. Ain't nobody coming. If anything, they're trying to stick medicine inside us right now that we don't want. Ain't nobody trying to help us. Forgiveness comes with an apology, and we ain't got no apology. It's another class. Read on. And I heard another voice from heaven saying, come out of her, my people. God says to get away from them. Why? Read on. That ye be not partakers of her sin. Meaning they've committed sins they have to pay for. The rape, the robbery, the pillage, the plunder. 
the lies against God, the lies against the Bible, the lies against the Son of, the, uh, of God. That's the biggest lie that they did on this earth was changing Christ from a black man to a white man. And you think God is going to be like, you know what? Those little nigglets forgive them. So I forget that God is not like you. God is not unrighteous. This got nothing to do with how I personally feel. Read it again. And I heard another voice from heaven saying, come out of her, my people. You need to come to your right mind and get on the right side, which is the side of God. Come out of her, my people. Read on. That ye be not partakers of her sins and that ye receive not of her plague. She's going to get plagued by God. And there's nothing you could do to stop it. Read on. For her sins have reached unto heaven. Meaning she's accumulated a big tab of sin. And she must pay for that sin. Read on. And God hath remembered her iniquity. That's not me. I'm not sitting down mad at everything about what they did to us. And the reason why is because I know that I, we brought this on ourselves. That don't excuse the fact that God going to jack them up real bad you're gonna see just how bad read on read that verse again for her sins have reached unto heaven meaning god said enough the king of kings the lord of lords the almighty has said look i'm sick of these people read on and god hath remembered her iniquity just because you forgave god has it documented he said i'm gonna remember what the other nations did. Read on. Reward her even as she rewarded you. And God is going to give them back a reward. So y'all could get in that Christian kumbaya forgiveness spirit towards them. God is going to bring, bring judgment on them. Nothing you could do to stop it. He says to do what? Read on. Reward her even as she rewarded you. Even if that's not in your heart, God is going to put it in your heart. Watch, I'm going to prove it to you. Hold on one second before you read the next verse. Watch this, watch this, watch this. Uh, read it again. Watch this, watch this, watch how dangerous this Bible is. Reward her even as she rewarded you. And double unto her double. Do what? And double unto her double. How do you do double hangings, double rapes, double robbery, double slave ships? God says to do what? And double unto her double according How to How do work. you do that? The atrocity, double Tulsa, Oklahoma, double Mississippi burning. Okay. Double the transatlantic slave trade. Double the sub sahara slave trade. How do you do that? Double the, the, the atrocities that they did to the, uh, uh, the, the, when they tar and feathered us, when they left us out in the sun, when they would take horses and rip our, 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 us with limbs, let one horse run that way, let the other horse run that way, and rip our bodies off. How do you double that? God says, I want double to come to all the nations that afflicted us. Hey, if I was the other nations, I would be trembling in fear right now. Because this cannot be stopped. It's going down. There's nothing you could do to stop it. God is not going to change his mind. Give me that in Malachi chapter 3, verse 6. We're going to come back here. God is not going to say, because you feel a little warm and fuzzy inside. I changed my mind. This is the book of Malachi, chapter 3 and verse 6. For I am the Lord, I change not. Say that again. For I am the Lord, I change not. God don't change. God does not change. Go back to where you was in Revelations. The book of Revelations. Chapter 18 and verse 6. 
Reward her, even as she rewarded you. You ain't going to hear this in no Christian, Catholic, Methodist, Baptist, Jehovah's Witness church. You ain't going to hear that there. God says what? Read it again. Reward her, even as she rewarded you. God wants the vengeance. The creator of all mankind wants the vengeance, and he wants what? Read it again. Reward her, even as she rewarded you. Read on. And double unto her double. According to hey, her if I if I studied what they did to these black people, and then I hear after we some of us are psychologically damaged from what we saw, and now I'm saying seeing God have it documented in the most powerful book known to mankind that double is going to happen back to them. This is one time you should be proud to be black. <laughs> proud! You should be thanking the Lord. You should be thanking the Lord that this is not coming your way. No matter how bad your life is right now, you should be thanking the Lord that you are an Israelite and you don't have to face this judgment that's coming. Read on. In the cup which she has filled, fill to her double. For he says it again, fill her back double what she did. If I was not an Israelite and I have to face this, I don't know how we'll be able to function. This, to know that this is coming to you and it's not, we didn't know it was coming. We didn't believe it. God is a mastermind. He's letting us find out now and tell the people, you going to get, mm, you going to get it. No one was little. Your brother was teasing you. My sister used to tease us all the time. You going to get it. And when it came, it hurt. That's what we got to say to you people. Y'all can forgive them all you want. You going to get it. Read on. How much she has glorified herself. Are they not in their glory right now? Okay. Going to the moon, bitcoins, the, the controlling the banking system, controlling the media, Controlling law enforcement, controlling government, controlling the jobs. Are they not glorifying themselves right now? Read on. And lived deliciously. Are they not living deliciously? Do they not have everything while we have nothing and we have scraps? Are we not struggling, not knowing where our next meal is coming from? Not knowing if we could put gas in our car, not knowing if we're going to lose our job? Read on. So much torment and sorrow give her. So much torment and sorrow give. This is coming from the creator. I, we can't sit down and think about what God has in store. So for you people, does, does that forgiveness to them? You stupid as hell. Me, I'm just staying out the way. And I'm going to sit back and just watch God execute judgment. Like I said, I don't have no hatred for nobody. I don't have no hatred for the other nations, and I'm not going to tell you to come to that place. My focus when I speak to you is to get your mind right with God. There are casualties of war. And what's coming to them, I'm, listen to what I'm saying, what's coming to them is worse than what they did to us. And I can't wrap my mind around that. I cannot wrap my mind around that. Think about it. What's coming to them is worse than what they did to us. And y'all talking about forgiveness? Y'all lost your damn mind. You should be praising the Lord when you hear this, that the Lord had mercy on you. That's what I wake up every day. And I, some days I get mad. Some days I get upset when things are going wrong. I praise the Lord that the Most High have mercy on me, and I don't want to trade places with them. Read on. For she saith in her heart, I sit a queen, and am no widow. Now, not, I'm not going to see any loss of life. That's what they think. Ain't nothing going to happen to us. We not like them niggas. Read on. And shall see no sorrow. No sorrows coming my way. Okay, no sorrows coming my way. 
They singing blue skies and apple pie and and they baseball and they think nothing's gonna happen. Who wants to live like that? And and in Fantasy Island, we not. Therefore, shall her plagues come in one day. And one day their life is going to be turned upside down. Read on. Death. What? Death. What? Death. God is bringing death to the door. God is bringing death to the door. No beef, no more. <laughs> That's scary. I'm reading this and I'm scared. Read on. And mourning and famine. And she shall be. You're going to have mourning and you're going to have famine. You're going to find out what is to be in mourning and hungry. Keisha, I don't understand you. Can we use our biblical beliefs as valid cause to not do so? I don't understand. But do anyone know or can offer advice to what to do when your job is mandating? We're going to touch on that, Keisha. We're going to touch on that. We're going to touch on that. Just be. I know we started late. I'm sorry. It wasn't my fault. I'm going to try to briefly go into that. That was my plan for this week, but I just couldn't. Uh, I couldn't articulate what I was feeling inside the right way. And sometimes that happens to me. Sometimes I have to ponder on a situation. I don't like to just throw things out at you. So I know what you're feeling, Keisha. I know you're worried. But before I can take you down that line, I need to take you down. The reality of Satan is coming down with great wrath. This goes in conjunction with what we just read. Satan knows he's about to get hurt and his attitude is, all this stuff is coming to me. I'm going to get you. Okay? He's like, look, I'm going down. I'm taking as much of you as I can. And he is going to be successful with taking a lot. That's what it means that Satan is coming down unto you a great wrath. He is going to get a high body count. Give me that. Uh, Zechariah chapter 13, verse 8. For you people who are new, Satan is going to get a high body count. When he goes down, he's, take, he's like Nino Brown. <laughs> okay remember when Nino Brown was in court and he tried to play the victim and he pointed out what's his name again Christopher Williams he said he did it and the case got thrown out that's how Satan is Satan is going to say the same thing if this ain't my fault them niggas did it <laughs> Satan is going to be the Nino Brown while the city is getting jacked <laughs> Say he's gonna be the new new Jackson. While God is jacking the city, y'all gonna see Nino Brown live and in person in front of your face, pointing fingers at you. That's what Satan. That's why the scriptures say he is the accuser of our brethren. He accuses before God day and night. We gonna read that. Satan is the new Nino Brown. Some of them never even saw the movie, New Jack City. Bring it up, bring it up so they can see it. After all the evil he did and they brought him in the courtroom, he manipulated the court. Okay, he said, listen, I tried to live a good life, but I was manipulated. 1991, that's how long that movie came out. Damn, I'm old. Okay, that's what Satan going to do to y'all when judgment come. He started pointing fingers in the courtroom. Okay, you can take that off. Where were we? Zechariah 13 verse 8. It's the book of Zechariah, chapter 13 and verse 8. And stop, it shall stop, 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 stop. Thomas, Jacob, Oregon, he put in the book of Joshua, mentioned in the Bible, Esau killed 
Babylonian. There's no such thing as the book of Joshua. I know there's black Hebrew Israelites that believe in that, just like, oh, gosh. Y'all yeah, watched a video today with a bunch of idiots, a bunch of total idiots, letting a woman speak about uh, uh, just mind-boggling foolishness from other books outside of the, that contradict the Bible. And the people were eating it up with a spoon. There's no book of Joshua and there's no book of Enoch. That's something that could easily be proven. That's something that was thrown at you so you get distracted from the judgment that God has in the Holy Bible. There's no book of Joshua and there's no book of Enoch. How can a person honor their parents when they eat? My mother was evil and I still honored her. How is that difficult? Just don't let her cause you to sin. Okay, I still honor my mother. I never disrespected her. I never caused harm to her. I never broke none of the commandments concerning her. That's what it means to honor your parents. Read that for me. Zechariah chapter 13, verse 8. The book of Zechariah chapter 13 and verse 8. And it shall come to pass. Wait, 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 wait. Julius says that this person is a scoffer. If they are, block them. Block them. Send them to Blakanda. Hey. Give them a chance. Give them a chance. Just so that the people see I'm forgiving. I'm forgiving. I'm not such a mean guy after all. Hey. Say something stupid. We will send you to welcome to Blakanda. Zechariah chapter 13, verse 8. Read that, please. The book of Zechariah, chapter 13, and verse 8. And it shall come to pass that in all the land. All the land where the Israelites are. Read on. Saith the Lord, two parts therein shall be cut off and die. So a lot of you are going to fall under Satan's wrath. His job is to take life. And he's going to be successful. For every ten of you, he's going to kill seven. He's going to kill seven of every ten. of Some of you are going to hear this truth, and you're going to go right back and rock with Satan. We've already seen that here. Why? Before I was mad, like at the Bezalels, at the Judah Mac, everything, but that's prophecy. And I was in my feelings. I was getting in my personal feelings, and I'm like, wait, 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 wait. It's written in the Bible that people are going to betray us. It's written in the Bible that people are going to slash. Someone has to fit that prophecy, and we've seen it. All that matters is that we are still here. We're still thriving. We're still surviving while they're lying. We're thriving and surviving while you're lying. What T-shirt are we on now? Is that T-shirt number four, five? I'm not, I'm not keeping count. Just keep count for me, please. Okay? We're thriving and surviving while your black ass is lying. So we feel sorry for you. It's written in the Bible. So you'll see IUIC exposed. Then you watch it. It's all garbage. It's all garbage. You have to do stuff like that. That's Satan testing to see. Let me see who's going to get emotional. And in the Bible. We have to be tested. Our integrity has to be tested to see if we're about that life. The same way when our beloved sister Joy Morgan died and the whole world was attacking us. And where where the people that was attacking us now? Where 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 y'all at? Y'all joined with the white man to attack us. And everybody was against us. Where you are? You ain't you ain't keeping no commandments. You ain't in no truth. Show me the proof that you're still in the truth. What, that's teacher number six, right? That's, 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 show me the proof that you're still in the truth. Okay? If you're walking up to the front of our school to shoot mute rap videos, disc videos, and putting middle fingers up, you are not in the truth. Men of God don't do stuff like that. That blue idiot girl, that nasty blue girl that was attacking us, she, she just opened back her page to do stuff while she left IUIC. You not in the truth. 
Show me the proof that you're still in the truth. If your life's mission is to expose IUIC and why you left still, after three going on four years, you're not in the truth. Uh, I mean, Michael, Israel, they make it so easy. They, they make it so easy, Michael. I'm not on a roll. They just make it easy. So can we read that one more time, please? And it shall come to pass that in all the land, saith the Lord, two parts therein shall be cut off and die. Read on. But the third shall be left therein. There's one third that's going to be preserved. Nobody's going to destroy them. They're going to take a tax. Satan is going to come for them. They're going to take a tax. But it says the third part shall be left therein. Why? Because the Most High is going to put his holy angels around us to protect us. Read on. And I will bring the third part through the fire. He's going to deliver us from the destruction to come. You're making videos against us, and the world is about to be set on fire. You're not in the truth. You're not in the truth. That dumbass Gina Blue girl, she says, oh, I'm writing a book. Who, could you read in fire? <laughs> I can't read in fire. I'm writing a book. For going on four years later, you're not in the truth. You were just here to test our integrity. Read on. And I will refine this. Yes, yes, put it up so people can see the new people don't know who she is. She was attacking us. If y'all ever come across a girl named Gina Blue, she's now smoked. This was recently, just a couple of months. This is our page now. Smoking weed. Tattoos all over her body, and her behind is out. And a lot of y'all was simple. Don't call her the blue waffle. Where are you taking her? Now she's back smoking weed and doing lesbian videos and talking about she's writing a book against us. She just came here to test our integrity with the dollar sign earrings. Satan gave her those dollar sign earrings. Get off the screen. I'm, I feel like I'm going to throw up. Remember all the attention she was getting? All of them. They all got attention. Big, big numbers. Where they at now? You're not in the truth. You ain't got no proof. And her whole life mission now is to attack us. She sided with everybody you could think of. And where they at? Where they got them? Read it again, please. And I will bring the third part through the fire. And I will bring the third. If destruction's coming to this earth, all you should be thinking about is how I don't get burned it up with everybody else. That's what you should be thinking about. How can I make sure I don't get burnt up with everybody else? Read on. And will refine them as silver is refined. You need to go through a refining process so you could be delivered. When gold is found in its purest form, it has impurities in it. It has other metals. When silver is found in its purest form, it has impurity, tin, zinc, copper, iron. You have to melt it out. So God says what? Read on. And we'll refine them as silver is refined. You got to refine them as silver is refined. Read on. And we'll try them as gold is tried and try them as gold is tried we're being tried right now we're being melted down we're being broken down and we still here you got to go through that refining process you got to go through those attacks satan is going to test your integrity read on they shall call on my name and what they shall call on my name they're going to learn this truth and learn who their maker is read on and I will hear them. And then the Most High is going to hear us and say what? Read on. I will say, it is my people. And they shall say, the Lord is my God. So my job is to bring you back to the Most High God and teach you how to call on him. Teach you how to walk in righteousness and be a living, walking, talking, breathing example of his son. Not to hold grudges and to go back and forth with people so that Satan can get an advantage. Give me verse 
Revelation chapter 12, verse 7. The book of Revelations, chapter 12 and verse 7. And there was war in heaven. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon. And the dragon fought and his angels and prevailed not. This is happening now in the heavens, in the spiritual world. There's a war going on for control because the devil says that the world has been given unto him. Give me Job chapter 9, verse 24, real quick. The book of Job, chapter 9, and verse 24. The earth is given into the hand of the wicked. Wicked people, wicked rulers control this earth. It ain't us. We, ain't, we don't write no legislation. We don't have no banks. We can't change no laws. We can't issue no loans. We can't stop people from getting the medication. The rulers of this earth are forcing medication on you whether you want it or not. They're writing laws into effect. They're telling you two men can have sex with each other. Two women can have sex with each other. Read it again. The earth is given into the hand of the wicked. Because God allowed this earth to be in the hands of the wicked. Read on. He covereth the faces of the judges thereof. And he covered our faces because we were set up to be the judges of this earth. So he said, I need to erase them. I need to erase them that black image of Christ they have, and put up a white man with blonde hair and blue eyes, then I need to steal the identity of the judges that God put in place, the 12 tribes of Israel. Do we not see people do that? Y'all want to call this Bible as a lie? We've seen that happen with our own eyes. Wicked people took control of the earth, did iconoclasm, destroyed all the religious art, washed, whitewashed the art, erased the identity of Jesus Christ, and now they have the world in wickedness. Who's telling you you can't keep the Sabbath? Who's mad if you grow your beard? Who's mad if you put fringes on? Who's telling you that Christ is a white man and not a black man? Who wants to do away with the Bible? Who is telling you two men can sleep with each other? Two women can sleep with each other? Who is pushing to teach your kids that stuff? Read it again, Job 9.24. The earth is given into the hand of the wicked. He covereth the faces of the judges thereof. So who covered the faces of the judges? We were the judges of God. Give me that Deuteronomy chapter 28 verse 1 real quick. We're going to come back here again. The book of Deuteronomy chapter 28 and verse 1. And it shall come to pass. If thou shalt hearken diligently unto the voice of the Lord thy God, to observe and to do all his commandments, which I command thee this day. How does a judge judge the earth? By following the commandments of God. God made this deal with the Israelites. You will be the ones that rule the planet if you follow the commandments that were given to you. Read on. That the Lord thy God will set thee on high above all nations of the earth. So our office was to be judges of the earth on high above all nations. And we broke that agreement. So go back to Job 9.24. The book of Job chapter 9 and verse 24. The earth is given into the hand of the wicked. So God took the earth from us and gave it to the other nations. That's why they have kingdoms on this earth. That's why they have little heavens set up on this earth. They have the earth the way they want it. They in their heaven. They in their rulership. Read on. He covereth the faces of the judges thereof. They said for us to stay unquestioned, we must erase the identity of these people. Call them black. Call them African. Call them Negro. Call them Nubian. Call them anything but the 12 tribes of Israel. Cover their faces up. Read on. If not, where and who is he? If it's not the people that's doing the evil now, where and who is he? Where? Who is it if it's not who we say it is? Then y'all want to call us racist. Y'all want to call us liars. Y'all want to say we in a cult. At least we don't go get burned it up with the rest of y'all. <laughs> that's the way I look at it. I don't care. Call me anything. Call me black. Call me a nigga. Call me a cult. Just don't call me burnt up. <laughs> That's the way I look at it. Call me whatever you want. Yeah, I'll be that nigga today. I won't be that black 
toast that dust on the floor later on. That's you. You can call me all the names you want. I don't care what y'all say. Anybody leaving this truth now, you dumb as hell. You are dumb. You retarded. Because there's too much information coming out this Bible now for you to say, you know what? I don't know if I want to do this anymore. As Fred Sapper would say, you big dummy. Who he was in Revelation chapter 18? Oh, go back to Revelation chapter 12, verse 7. You the big dummy. The book of Revelation chapter 12 and verse 7. And there was war in heaven. Michael and his angels fought against... You're not going to see that with your eyes. John the Revelator was shown a vision of things happening in the spirit world. Read on. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon. And the dragon fought and his angels and prevailed not. Let's, let's, let's expound upon who the dragon is. Go to the first verse, Revelation 12, verse 1. We're going to drop down here because we may have some new people listening. The book of Revelation, chapter 12 and verse 1. And there appeared a great wonder in heaven, a woman clothed with the sun and the moon under her feet. The woman is the 12 tribes of Israel because God refers to us as his wife. Christ refers to us as his bride. It's symbolic. It's metaphorical. Okay? The sun and the moon represents wisdom. Read on. And upon her head, a crown of 12 stars. The 12 stars are the 12 tribes of Israel. Read on. And she, being with child, cried. What were we waiting for a child? We were all through the Bible. It was prophesied that a child was going to come to deliver us. In the Old Testament, he's called Shiloh. He's called Emmanuel. He's called the peaceable one. Okay, it's all in our Old Testament writings that a deliverer, a redeemer, a savior, a commander, a king was going to come. Read it again. And upon her head, a crown of 12 stars. And she being with child cried, travailing in birth. Because it was a fight for our savior, our king to come. We have history of the governors, the rulers saying kill all the babies because they were trying to stop the Messiah from coming. That's documented history to massacre all the children under a certain age because they knew according to our writings, our scriptures, that a savior is going to come and they were afraid. And that's why I don't listen to you niggas that don't believe the Bible because the rulers of the earth believe it and read it. Then you got a dumb nigga searching into other books. The white man ain't worried about no book of Joshua or no book of Jubilee or that dumbass stuff that y'all read. They worry about us waking up with the King James 1611 Bible and waking up the rest of the world. They, want, they ain't reading them stupid ass books y'all reading. They don't care about none of that. They made that to keep you in foolishness. And y'all reading, I'm watching Israelite camps read it like it's golden. You dumb as hell because none of that stuff got prophecy in it. And it's new writings that just came up. And every day we got some idiot, well, what about the book of Jasher? And what about the book of Jubilee? And the book of Enoch? Yeah, you keep reading them till the missiles come and burn up with them books also. Read it again. And she, being with child, cried, travailing in birth, and pain to be delivered. Because it was difficult, Christ's parents had to run and hide because the white man was trying to kill him. Because they did not want the Savior, the King, the Messiah, the Prince of Peace to come. Read on. And there appeared another wonder in heaven. And behold, a great red dragon. A what? A great red dragon. Read on. Having seven heads and ten horns and seven crowns upon his heads. Those are the seven governments of Esau, the Edomites, the rulers, the ruling European Union, the ruling white leaders on this earth is seven branches of them. It's not just American. You got America, you got Spain, you got Britain, you got Russia, you got Germany. It's seven different heads of how they rule throughout this earth. Read it again. And there appeared another wonder in heaven. And behold, so he's seeing Israel waiting for their savior to come. And then he's watching this dragon. Read on. A great red dragon 
having seven heads and ten horns and seven crowns upon his head. Because these are rulers on the earth. Okay? You got Greece, you got France, you got Russia, you got Britain, you got Germany. Ah, what did I miss? Don't make me pull out my Bible. Y'all should notice the bishop goes over this all the time. I want to keep the class moving. You got Greece. You have Greece, France, Russia, Great Britain, Germany, Belgium, and Italy. Let's keep this moving. Uh, keep going. And his tail drew the third part of the stars of heaven and did cast them to the earth. And the dragon stood before the woman, which was ready to be delivered. For to devour her child as soon as so it was born. So this is historical. The dragon, we have to ask, who was trying to kill Christ before he was born? Herod. Herod's kingdom is an extension of the United States of America right now. They, they ruled at different times as different heads. So drop down to verse 7. Verse 7. So, because John the Revelator is showing what happened spiritual behind the scenes that we didn't understand. Read on. Verse 7. And there was war in heaven. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon. And the dragon fought and his angels. And prevailed not. They're going to lose. They're going to lose. If there's any writings outside of the Bible that says that they get the victor, victory, it is fake. And that's what you read in the book of Joshua, in the book of Jubilee, in the book of Enoch. A whole bunch of stupid foolishness. Read on. And the dragon fought in his angels and prevailed not. Neither was their place found any more in heaven. And they're going to lose control of the earth. We read in Job chapter 9, 24, the earth is given into the hands of the wicked. They're going to lose power. They're going to lose control over us. Why? Read on. And the great dragon was cast out. That old serpent called the devil and Satan. So the dragon is called also the devil, the serpent, and Satan. There's many different names for him. Read on. Which deceiveth the whole world. How did he come in power? Through lies. The Bible is unraveling the lies. The reason why, we, the reason why you're listening to me today and Israel United in Christ exists is because we're unraveling the lies. Read on. He was cast out into the earth and his angels were cast out with him. All his power is going to be brought down. Read on. And I heard a loud voice saying in heaven, now it's come salvation. Now we get our salvation. Read on. And strength. And we are finally strong before the public's eyes. If we're not strong, why are they putting so much energy into trying to break us down? Why so much people is trying to slander us and stop us? If we was nobody's, leave us alone. There's strength. There's power in what we're teaching. Read on. Keep up with me. Keep up with me. And I heard a loud voice saying in heaven, now has come salvation and strength and the kingdom of our God. Our kingdom is approaching. Read on. And the power of his Christ. And we're seeing power. Christ is dead and gone. Why y'all scared of him? Why y'all are scared? If y'all don't believe in regeneration, reincarnation, why y'all are scared that we are telling you the truth about Christ and we're saying he's coming back? Y'all scared. How can a man be dead and have so much power that he's touching the lives of millions of people all over the world? And y'all scared. Now you're seeing Christ because when he walked the earth, y'all didn't see him as powerful. Y'all see him. Now you're seeing power. Because his spirit has revived in us. His spirit has fixed, has right the wrongs that these people thought we were finished. These people thought we couldn't get right. Because Christ is the light and he restored our sight. Now we are right. Read on. 
and the power of and the power of his Christ. For the accuser of our brethren. They've been accusing us, saying you people are nothing, you're no good, you're wicked, you're monkeys, you're thieves, you're uneducated, you're bums, look at your nappy hair, look at your big nose, look at your black skin. They accuse us through the power of the devil. They shoot us down through the power of the devil. They keep us oppressed through the power of the devil and lies. The accuser of our brethren, read on. Is cast down. They're going down. They are going down down read on which accused them before our god day and night they're trying to find fault with us day and night read on and they overcame him by the blood of the lamb but we're gonna win because christ's blood was spilt for us read on and by the word of their testimony and because of that we're not giving our own testimony we're giving the testimony of god we're giving the testimony of God and his son. Read it again. And they overcame him by the blood of the lamb. Because Christ had to die for us first and ascend into the heavens and sit at the right hand side of the most high God. And that's when the power came to us. That's when the comforter came to us. He had to be glorified when he died. That's why they didn't respect him when he walked the earth for all the great things he did. But they're going to put some respect on his name now. Read on. And by the word of their testimony. And we're, we're speaking a different text. We ain't speaking about Malcolm X. We ain't speaking about Martin Luther King. We ain't speaking about Marcus Garvey. We ain't speaking about no other testimony but the testimony of the Most High and His Son. And that's how we overcome it. That's why we a problem now. Read on. And they loved not their lives unto the death. And we don't like this life we live in. Y'all could take the crumbs. I don't want no crumbs. I want everything that my father, Christ said in my father's house, there are many mansions. I wouldn't tell you that if it wasn't so. I want me a mansion. You got to worry about keeping your job if you don't take their medication. You got to worry about your kid's education if you don't take their medication. You can't go out to certain place. You can't eat this. You can't eat that. Don't drink this. Don't do that. How could you like your life? And you dumb niggas is, is selling your soul for crumbs. We'll give you it. We'll pay for your college. We'll give you this if you take the medication. You're selling your soul cheap. I can't talk to you. I can't be friends with you. Read it again. And they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb. That's why he had to die on the cross. We are truly washed in the blood of Jesus. His blood was spilled to wash away our sins and our crimes so that Satan can't accuse us no more. So that's why we keep the commandments, to honor his death. That's why we grow our beard and put our fringes on and keep the Sabbath day. And we're learning forgiveness. Read on. And by the word of their testimony. And we got a different testimony. I don't want to hear what no nigga got to say. I don't want to hear what no black person got to say. I don't want to hear about your reparations or, or, or any of your economics or any of your, your politics. I don't give a damn about none of that. The real politician, the real person on the ballot is in the Bible. And when he come, there will be no vote. That's all she wrote. There, there will be no vote. When he come, that's all she wrote. It's going down. Talk about voting. That's the most stupidest thing. You the, go vote or die. Go out and vote. That's why we don't, we don't have nothing because the people that's ruling is wicked. And you niggas really think you're going to vote somebody in office that don't look like you that's going to care about you. You keep living that dream. You keep living that dumbass dream. I'm sick of it. Real justice, real reparations is in the Bible. Read it again. And they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb. And we're going to win because his blood was spilt for us. Read on. And by the word of their testimony. We're going to win because we got the true word, the true testimony now. This is going to stand. The Bible has stand the test of time. That's why I talk like I talk and walk like I walk. And I don't care what nobody else got to say. Read on. 
and they loved not their lives unto the death. And that's why I make it clear to you, I hate this world. Let it burn. That's the only thing Usher got right. Let it burn, let it burn, let it burn. The world, that is. <laughs> let it burn. Because I hate this place. Who can like this? Life? How could you wake up every day and feel fine? You, put, you, you can't even watch a show without seeing two men kissing. Two nasty women licking on each other. Nasty whores walking the street. Everybody's smoking weed now. Now they're trying to push medication on you. And you think that this is a way to live? You think that this is what God wants? You stupid as hell. Let this place burn, like the Bible says. When I was little, I always heard about the lake of fire, and I didn't understand it. Now let it come. Let it burn. That's why you should wake up every day thinking, let this place burn. So we can get our turn. T-shirt number one. Well, we are 10, 11, I don't know, I'm not keeping count. Let this place burn so we can get our turn. I'm going to give y'all that one. Y'all just get a picture of the earth on fire and just write on it. Let the place burn so we can get our turn. And then put 12 tribes of Israel on it. <laughs> Tell me that won't be a crazy t-shirt. Let this place burn so we can get our turn. Read it again. Read it again. And they overcame him by the blood of the lamb. That's why the importance of Christ dying for us should be forefront in your mind. That's somebody who cared. Ain't nobody else laid down their life for you. Ain't nobody else was tortured for you. Read on. And by the word of their testimony. And by the, we finally have words that matter. If it didn't matter, we wouldn't be in the news. You got niggas lying on the, you got Esau lying on the bishop now. There's a video that just came out now with some white Jewish man talking about Nathaniel. What are you mentioning the bishop name for? Why are you talking about us in purple for if we are relevant? Ah, today a new video dropped. They wasn't talking about us before. Why are they talking about us? Read it again. Read it again. And they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb. Because we now know why Christ died and who he died for. Read on. And by the word of their testimony. We ain't talking about no reparations. We ain't talking about no politics. We ain't talking about no government. Read on. And they loved not their lives unto the death. And we making it clear, we want out of here. We sick of y'all. We sick of this place. We don't like our lives. We know that God, according to God's word, he are better for us. So we don't like our lives. We don't like the way it is. Read on. Therefore, rejoice. Ye heavens. So have fun, ye heavens. The heavens are the other nations that's ruling. They're in their heaven. So he's making mockery now. You rejoice in them. Read on. And ye that dwell in them. And ye that are dwelling in them rejoice. Have your fun. But watch the clock. Have your fun. The time is running out. Read on. Woe to the inhabitants of the earth. Woe, destruction to you people on this earth. Read on. And of the sea. For the devil has come down unto you, having great wrath. It's time for him to go down, so he's going to do his greatest work now. His greatest work is being done now. I dramatized this, and I took so long to get here. It's because y'all keep emailing me, telling me, let's go to this medication they're trying to give out. Okay? If I am him, if I'm the devil, hell yeah, I'm going to try and medicate y'all. Hell yeah, I'm going to threaten your jobs. I'm going to threaten your school. I'm going to threaten your health. I'm going to threaten everything. Because the Bible says what? Read it again. Therefore rejoice, ye heavens. I just wanted that one part about the devil. For the devil has come down unto you, having great wrath. Why? Because he sees that he's running out of time. Read on. Because he knoweth. That he hath but a short time. Why do you think so much energy is put in to medicate them, even if we have to give them money? 
Even if we have to give them scholarships, give them a car, give them a lap dance, give them free health care, give them a day off. Don't charge them, medicate them. That's the devil saying by all costs, because remember what I said. He's going to get a high body count. The Bible has a document. He's going to kill off two-thirds of us. He's going to kill off two-thirds of us. And like I said before, how he go from hating our guts to now he's just, oh, oh we just want to help the black people. We want to help the blacks. We want to help the coloreds. We want to help them. They're impoverished, and, and we just we just love them, and we want to help them, the colored people. Read it again. Because he knoweth that he hath but a short time. So the Bible says that the devil knows he's running out of time, and he rules through men on this earth that hate our guts. What makes you think that he got any good for you? So I understand you're worried about your job. You're worried about school. You're worried about the businesses being closed. You're worried about the economy. This is supposed to happen. If I'm the devil and I see that my time is up, I'm destroying everything. I'm not going out without a fight. I'm not going down without a fight. So your job is to believe that God is going to give you the victory. A lot of you are asking me questions that I cannot answer. I can't tell you, oh, just do this. Just do that. Just do this. The only thing I can tell you is the Bible says that we're going to get the victory and we're going to win. Everybody's faith is going to be tested. And a lot of you are falling apart now. A lot of you are falling apart. Why? Give me Revelation chapter 3. Verse 8. The book of Revelation chapter 3 and verse 8. I know thy works. Behold, I have set before thee an open door. Who's that door? Christ. Christ says, I am the door. If you come any other way, you're a thief and a robber and a liar. Read on. And no man can shut it. And can't nobody shut that door. I don't know about you, but I'm going through that. I'm going through that door. And ain't nobody stopping me. Don't worry, Ariana. We got you here. You in the right place. You going through that door too. Just walk with me. You going through that door. Read it again. I know thy works. Behold, I have set before thee an open door, and no man can shut it. Can't nobody shut this door. I don't care about no medication they trying to push out. I don't care if they threatening you with your job. I don't care if they threatening where you live or whatever. The Bible says no man. The Bible says we win. So don't get it twisted. Don't let them put so much fear on you that now you're questioning God. God didn't bring us here for them to win. Okay, our faith is being tested. Read on. For thou hast a little strength. Because we got a little strength. How? Because you got hair. It took a little strength to get here. It took a little strength to get where we are. Read on. And has kept my word. And what we got to do, read it again. And has kept my word. We got to keep this word. What happened to our forefathers when they came out of Egypt? They didn't keep the Lord's word. They didn't believe. So God let them die in the wilderness. So we've been freed and we must believe. Read verse 8 again. I know thy works. Behold, I have set before thee an open door. You know what it is? Hey, there was a scene in Django when uh, Jamie Foxx, they saw him kill the men that was pulling the slaves. And Jamie Foxx opened the cage and they didn't want to come out. He just watched them kill the slave traders. And those men were so broken and destroyed in the spirit, they stood inside the cage. They didn't want to come out. Christ said he opened up that door for us. We ain't scared slaves no more. Read it again. I know thy works. 
Behold, I have set before thee an open door. The door has been opened. We ain't no scared slaves no more. Those days are over. It's a wrap. We know who our king is. We know who our savior is. We know who our redeemer is. And he ain't no liar. Read on. And no man can shut it. Can't nobody come and shut that door. Read on. For thou hast a little strength. Because we came here with a little bit of strength that they didn't rip from us. I'm talking from that little bit of strength that I got. I'm not no big, bad, tough guy, but I got a little bit of strength that they didn't pull from my body. Read on. And has kept my word. And I'm not going to let them take this word away from you. That's why the Lord put men before you who's going to use the little strength they have to make you sure you keep this word because the world is trying to erase this word from you. So they're scaring you every time you listen to the news. Los Angeles, they just said that they're making a mask back up. And they said they're going after kids 12 and under now. Before it was like 18, 17, now they're like, no, let's drop it down to 12. We don't have enough little kids medicated up right now with that stuff. So, yes, I understand that you're afraid. Yes, I understand that you're scared and you worry. But the Bible says what? Read it again. I know thy works. Behold, I have set before thee an open door. There's a door for us. There's an escape for us. Whether you believe it or not. The Messiah has a door that we're going to go through. We're just being tested right now. Don't give up. Don't get scared. Don't let them take that little bit of strength that got you here. He didn't tell us all this information for them to just come and medicate all of us and ruin our lives. God is not a liar. His son is not a liar. Let God be true and men be liars as it is written. Read on. And no man can shut it. Can't nobody shut this door that's been opened up to us. A door been opened up to us. And ain't nobody going to shut it. And anybody that get in our way, they're going to lose their fingers. You know when you slam a door and your fingers are in the way, that's all that's going to happen when you try to close that door. You're going to lose your damn fingers. Can't nobody shut that door that Christ opened for us. This is our escape. That's what he's telling us. Read on. For thou hast a little strength. If we got to keep that little strength. Don't let them pull that little strength from us. That strength converts to your faith, your belief. Read on. And has kept my word. And we got to keep this word because they're trying to rip it from us. That's why they're throwing out so much lies. They're throwing out so much slander. They're throwing out so much dumbass books. They're throwing out so much teachers. They're throwing out so much scholars. They even taking our own black people and turning them against us. That's why I don't listen to you stupid niggas. You got some dumbass Israelite camps talking about foolishness. I couldn't believe this, the foolishness I heard. I said, why did I even let my ears hear this garbage? Dumbass lady saying, I used to follow IUIC, but when I read about the dragons and the Netherlands and the, and the this and from that book, and I'm like, listen to this stupid ass woman. Making up all this dumbass stuff that you can easily rip apart and dissect that. And she got a bunch of dumb niggas listening to her. You people are stupid as hell. And that's what Esau wants. You're not closing this door that's been opened. Try it. I dare anybody to try it. You're not closing this door. Read on. And has kept my word. Because we're going to keep this word. Read on. And has not denied my name. We're not denying what this Bible stands for. His name is the word of God. Read on. Behold, I will make them of the synagogue of Satan, which say they are Jews and are not. So why does he switch to I'm going after you imposters? Because the leaders of this earth stand today through Satan coming with grave wrath and lies. There are people walking this earth who are saying they're Jews, who are not Jews, who are liars, that are putting a lot of energy and a lot of overtime into trying to stop us. If we was liars, leave us alone. You control everything, the media, TV, the banks, politics, government, military. Leave us dumb black niggas alone. 
Read it again, please. Behold, I will make them of the synagogue of Satan, which say they are Jews and are not. Why in all this great testimony, there's emphasis on coming for imposters? I didn't wake up one day and just start saying that I'm a Jew, that I'm an Israelite. I read it in the Word. I got the testimony from a book. Remember, they beat us and stopped us from reading and writing for hundreds of years. How do we now pick up the same book that they taught us on Sunday about a white man with blonde hair and blue eyes and now come out and condemn this world? It don't make no sense. We did it with a little bit of strength, and we kept the word of God, and we kept this testimony. We don't. Which say they are Jews and are not, but do lie. But what? But do lie. But what? But do lie. Stop the blood clot lying. Somebody's a liar. That's why I laugh at you stupid niggas that say the book, well, the, the Bible has it's been rewritten many times. How is it rewritten in our favor that we a problem now? You know how stupid you sound? You dumbass niggas talking about the Bible. If I, if I had a chance to rewrite the Bible and I run the damn world, wouldn't I take out everything that brings anything back to a black man with skin so dark it looked like it was burned in a furnace with hair of wool? Would I not just write his hair was golden yellow? And his skin was white like milk. Why would I, well, if, if I had a chance to rewrite the Bible, which they're the only people, the powers that be always had the only chance to rewrite it, wouldn't I erase the image of Christ that we're bringing out right now? That's a problem, you stupid niggas. Wouldn't I pull slavery out? They had the Bible in a time when we were unchanged. Illiterate, couldn't read and write. Wouldn't I erase all that, you dumb niggas? Y'all keep talking. The Bible's been rewritten many times. You got to read this book. You got to read that book. No, nigga, we stand right here with this book. This book is a problem. This book is a problem. And if you dumb niggas can't see it, go die with them. All of a sudden, out of nowhere, you got a bunch of black people rising up all over the world telling everybody, oh, you lying. We're the real Jews. We're the Israelites. You're liars. We was just in chains 100 years ago. Y'all going to tell me that this book ain't real? And y'all reading that dumbass stuff? You deserve the death you get. Read it again, please. Behold, I will make them of the synagogue of Satan, which say they are Jews and are not, but do lie. But what? But do lie. You understand there's vengeance coming for liars. And the Bible tells you that Satan deceived the world in lies. He's a liar. The Bible tells you that the devil is a liar. And he used human beings on this earth to push and perpetrate those lies. And the Bible has it prophesied that I'm going to get the liars that stole somebody's identity. Read on. Behold, I will make them to come and worship before thy feet. I'm going to make them bow down. That's prophecy. They're going to bow down before your feet. So look, although they are saying people are going to get medicated, they're going to be successful, but there's going to be a small remnant that cleave unto God that's going to win. They are going to win. God is not going to tell me how to explain it to you, how to overcome. All he's going to tell me is believe in the word that I got your back. Because that's been a problem with the Israelites. I'm not going to tell you, well, do this at your job and do this and do that. The only thing that I can tell you is according to the word of God, we win. I'm not going to come here and BS you and tell you, well, all you have to do is this. And all you got to do is fill this out and all you got to do that. No. God wants to test your faith because Satan is coming down with great wrath. And he wants to see what he's always wanted to see from us. Do you believe? Do you believe? That's all God been challenging us with from the dawn, from, from uh, Adam and Eve, from Cain and Abel, from the wilderness. He wants to see, do we believe? So if I come now and tell you, well, all you have to do is this and just fill that out and fill this. No, y'all going to sit back and chill. 
And God wants to see if you're about this life. Do you believe it? Now, with all the stuff that I brought out, why would you doubt him? He got us this far, and he said he opened the door, and can't nobody shut the door. So everybody should be ready to go through that door. Read on. And to know that I have loved. I'm sorry, read the verse before that. I will make them to come and worship before thy feet. And to know that I have loved thee. Because right now we don't know who God, we we were confused about who God loves. We were confused, we didn't know, we didn't feel love. So we was like, help me, white man Jesus. Meanwhile, white man Jesus was shooting us down, had us on slave ships, rationing food to us, and now white man Jesus want to stick needles in us. But Christ says, I'm going to come and I'm going to make it known. you I love you. So that's what you got to believe. It's all about the word. Give me Jeremiah 17, verse 5. It's all about the word. You got to believe what the word say. Don't believe Deacon Asaph. I don't, all I know is what the word say. Don't look up to me. I'm nobody. I'm nothing. I'm just like you. I just have faith because I've been doing this this long. And I've, I've looked at the world through different eyes. And I, I, it needs to burn. Stop thinking about saving it. Nobody's saving it. Nobody's going to come. You're not going to put nobody in office that's going to fix things. God has the world just the way he wants it right now. A bunch of wicked people running it, a bunch of homosexuals on it, a bunch of lying politicians, a bunch of corrupt bankers, a bunch of evil people controlling the media, media, disgusting music, whoring, nasty women showing their butt. God has the world just the way he wants it before he destroys it. So you got to take off those rosy colored glasses that make you think that things are going to get fixed. This is, he has it just the way he wants. If you believe that it's going to burn, understand, this is the conditions for the fire to come. Stop complaining about, well, this person is doing this and that person and, and my mom and my job and my this. No, then you don't believe what God says. Your mom's wicked, Satan is going to turn her up. Your boss is wicked, Satan going to turn him up. The president's wicked, Satan going to turn him up. The Food and Drug Administration wicked, Satan going to turn him up. Because he know if he have but a short time. The reason why y'all want things to get better and get fixed is because you don't believe what God wants. You don't believe what God wants. You're not in a, in a mindset of what God wants. And once you doubt God, you doubt if you'll be delivered. Read on. The book of Jeremiah, chapter 17 and verse 5. Thus saith the Lord, cursed be the man that trusteth in man. Stop trusting men. Men have lied to us. They failed us. They've let us down. Stop trusting men. Men don't know nothing. Men are stupid and evil and destructive. Read on. And maketh flesh his arm. Stop trusting in the fleshly arms of man. The fleshly arms of man will kill you, murder you, rob you. And take from you. Read on. And whose heart departed from the Lord. The heart of men have departed from God. So when I come to you every time, I'm telling you what God has to say. We are the mouthpiece of God. And that's why you're here, to hear what God has to say. So you got to understand, when the Bible says that the devil is coming down with great wrath, he's going to do some bad things. And why should he do nice things? Why should he stop? Why should he go against the divine nature that the Most High put him in? If that's what you're thinking, you are going to die. You're going to die if that's what you're thinking. Okay? I can't tell you how you're going to escape the uh, what they're trying to do to us, but you are going to win. Because the Bible says two-thirds are going to die, and I'm going to preserve one-third and bring them through the fire. 
One third is millions of us. Millions of people are going to be delivered. The earth got what? Like almost 8 billion people on it? Let's cut that 8 in half and put it to 4. Okay? Let's work with an even number. Let's say 3 billion is the, is the 12 tribes of Israel. He says he's going to only preserve one of that, of that uh, 3. So you're going to be delivered. You just got to believe on the word and believe what God says. Your faith is being tested right now. You're watching the devil come with all this wrath. You're losing your job. People are getting sick. The media is lying to you. They're pushing homosexuality at you. Police are shooting us down. There's violence in your neighborhood. The crime in New York is the worst now than ever. Every single day they shoot in not usually, it's not usually one a day, two a day. It's five, six, 13. They kill a two-year-old. They kill a 13. I can't keep up with it. I cannot keep up with the crime. I've never seen things like this. They shoot it in Times Square, tourist attraction. Every time, you saw how many times they shot up down there? Midtown Manhattan, where rich white people live. They just shooting that place up. It's like Harlem. Are you telling me this place ain't going down? The police don't want to do their job no more. Police are retiring. The guards in the prison system, they just put a news report now that they're resigning at an alarming rate. They're making guards do three shifts. Three shifts. They're mandating them to stay because people are not coming back because the prison system is overrun with evil. The streets of New York is being overrun with seats. New York is where Satan's seat is. When you read in the book of Revelation, it tells you that one of the churches are where Satan's seat is. Every place of down south is slow. California is slow. They, they call us the city that never sleeps. There's shootings around the clock, 3 o'clock, 4 o'clock in the morning, 10 people, 13 people. Anybody could get it at any time here. Why? Because the devil is going down with great wrath. And I know a lot of you are afraid. I know a lot of you are worried. Don't be scared. And stop listening to man. You got to book. There's more liars now than ever. There's more liars now than ever. Go back to where we was in Revelations. Revelations chapter 7. I'm sorry, 3 verse. Where do we stop? Verse 9. Watch this, watch this, watch this, watch this, watch this. The book of Revelations chapter 3 and verse 9. Behold, I will make them of the synagogue of Satan, which say they are Jews and are not, but do lie. So he says that there's going to be people lying. Read on. Behold, I will make them to come and worship before thy feet and to know that I have loved thee. It's going to be clear who God loves. Read on. Because thou has kept the word of my patience. The only way his love will be bestowed upon you is because you kept the word. You didn't let anybody move you, shake you, or break you, or take you. Read on. I also will ah, keep. That's a t-shirt. Don't let no one move you, shake you, break you, or take you. Okay? Let no one move you, shake you, break you, or take you. That's what Satan is trying to do now. The word devil means deceiver. Satan means adversary. Read on. I also will keep thee from the hour of temptation. Say that again. I also will keep thee from the hour of temptation. A lot of you are being tempted to go and get the medication. A lot of you have been tempted to go and move here, to go there, to do this, to do that. Read the verse before that. Behold, sorry, because thou hast kept the word of my patience. Because you believe what the Bible says with patience, you were patient and you waited. You were patient and you waited. You were patient and you waited. You didn't fall apart. Read on. I also will keep thee from the hour of temptation. That's the clue. That's the clue. Don't jump ship. Don't bail out on God like we've done. The whole Bible shows when we're in dire straits, we always turn our back on God. 
We always run to other gods. We always run to the other nations. We always run to, we trust in man. Read it again. Because thou has kept the word of my patience. Because we believe this word with patience, because that's what we are. We're very impatient people. Read on. I also will keep thee from the hour of temptation. The Most High is going to keep us and preserve us while the whole world is being tempted in evil. Read on. Which shall come upon all the world. What's coming on all the world right now? Never have we seen something come on all the world like this. Everybody's scared. Everybody's fighting. Everybody, they changing laws every day. to make, And they're coming closer and closer to your door. So the Bible says because we kept the word of his patience, the Most High is going to make a way for us. Don't get scared. This is just the devil going down with great wrath. That's all this is. The devil going down with great wrath. And he's supposed to do this because his job is to scare you to the point where you jump ship and you go against God. Why do you think when we read in the book of Job, that's what, get that for me real quick, Job chapter 3. Come on. You got it? Well, he says, put forth thine hand now. I'm sorry, it's... One second. Job chapter 1, verse 11. One, I'm, I'm sorry, I don't know why I said three. One verse 10, three verse 10. This, what's happening to us is exactly what happened to Job. Watch this. The book of Job, chapter 1 and verse 10. Hast not thou made an hedge about him and about his house and about all that he hath on every side? So the devil knew that God was protecting Job. So he's telling God that. You've been protecting this guy. Read on. Thou hast blessed the work of his hands, and his substance is increased in the land. But put forth thine hand now. Stop protecting him. Read on. And touch all that he has. And let me touch his job. Let me touch his wife. Let me touch his kids. Let me touch his flesh. Let me touch him. That's how Satan is. That's what it means to go down. He brought great wrath on Job. Killed his kids. Broke his wife's spirit. Killed his, his, his servants. Took away his property. Took away his money. Then eventually... He plagued Job with sickness. He plagued Job with sickness. That's what's coming to us right now. We're being plagued with sickness. That's how the devil works. This is how his war warfare is. This is how he comes with great wrath. Read it again. But put forth thine hand now and touch all that he hath, and he will curse thee to thy face. And that's what's happening to you people. You're ready to curse God because they're threatening you with this medicine. You're nervous. You're scared. All of a sudden, you don't believe the Bible. The job of the devil is to break your faith. Break your faith. Break your faith. That's what he's done from the dawn of time. That's what he did to Eve in the garden. He broke up. He was like, you can, you can eat of that. God has surely said, no, don't listen to him. Come here, let me talk to you. Let me talk to you. Come over here for a minute. And he broke Eve's faith. And the men that we are, we always lusting after the booty. He got weak for the booty. He became a simp for his wife. And he didn't even man up the way he was supposed to. So we're not following Adam's example. We saw what happened. That's why Paul says in the New Testament for the woman to be quiet. Don't talk no more. He said, let them learn in silence with all subjection. Why? Because you're the weaker vessel and you get emotional. It's not because we hate you. 
It's just because Satan already knows the first way that he destroyed us was to come to that emotional uh, person. And he's going to do the same thing now. So that's why you see a lot of women lining up to get that medication because they're nervous, they're scared, they don't know what to do, and they're making a pact with the devil just like you see now. Read it again. But put forth thine hand now. Stop protecting them, which is what the devil says. The devil can't do nothing to us unless God allows it. And we just read what Christ said, I'll open the door for you. Y'all going to go through it. So the devil says, what? Read it again. But put forth thine hand now. Stop protecting them or let them believe that they're not protected. Read on. And touch all that he has. And start touching their job, their money, their gasoline, their PlayStation. New cars were not made. This is the first record-breaking year they couldn't make no cars because of a microchip. They can't make medical equipment because of a microchip. I've been trying to buy me a, a, a another van. And I'm like, this piece of crap, they want $10,000, $12,000 for this that you could have got for three grand. So one of the biggest expenses right now is a used car because they didn't get to make no new cars. So the used car prices went up. So I'm like, you're, you're, you're crazy. I'm not giving y'all $8,000, $9,000 for this piece of garbage. My old raggedy van that I want to throw in the garbage right now, they want $8,000, $6,000 for it. They selling vehicles with 300,000 miles on it for $6,000, $7,000. I never thought I would see this ever in my life. But what happened was when they closed the factories, they stopped making the electronic devices that you need for the new cars, the dashboard. So some of them have got analog dashboard in it. So now they're saying that we're at the highest inflation ever. So a lot of you are getting nervous. Can't buy a new car. Can't go in the supermarket and splurge like you used to. Can't buy gas like you used to. And y'all getting scared. When Satan comes, he comes for what you love. When he comes with great wrath, he came at Job with great wrath. And he said, what? Read it again. But put forth thine hand now. Stop protecting them. Let them believe that they're forsaken. They're broken. They're destroyed. They're scared. Make them get scared. Read on. And touch all that he has. Start messing with their car, their house, their clothes, their movies, their food. Stop taking away their luxuries, their amenities. Make it difficult for them. Read on. And he will curse thee to thy face. And that's what a lot of you people are doing now. Satan is displaying his wrath and you're cursing God. You're getting weak. You should be ashamed of yourself with all the information that's coming out this Bible now. So I'm going to let y'all ponder on that. I'm going to let that marinate there. Something for y'all to think about. I'm going to take some questions. Not staying with y'all the whole night. Satan is going now with great wrath. This is his wrath being displayed, and it's going to get worse. It's going to get worse. I know that I need to be need that I need a strong man of God because I know I'm too weak. I'm out. just listen. The scriptures say faith come by hearing, Ariana. So you're in the right place. Just listen. Okay, and if you have someone with more powerful words, then listen to them. Don't listen to me. Don't let nobody the, the, the days of BS should be over. Stop letting people lie to you, man. Any pastor now, I'll be seeing a lot of these niggas teaching. Well, uh, give me money for my cash app. This ain't about taking your money now while you're at your weakest, while you're broken. I come here every week and don't ask y'all for a damn dime. Okay, and some of you will still send $5, $10, whatever to uh, my email, and I'm shocked. I'm grateful for it, but I don't come here every week asking y'all for money. Okay, because that's not what this is about. You got niggas using this word and using your fear so they could get paid. And they ain't telling you nothing. They're not telling you nothing. And I'll be seeing y'all just keep giving them your money. And they ain't telling you nothing. They're not going through this Bible and strengthening you the way you're supposed to be strengthened. Don't 
Nobody shouldn't be teaching with no damn cash app now begging for money while the world is coming to an end. Life is the hardest for me right now as we speak. I'm in the worst job ever, making barely any money so that I could do what I want. But what keep me strong and what keep me going is the word of God, the camaraderie, the brotherhood, the love that I'm getting from the people, and the belief in the scriptures that there's a door open and y'all not closing it. You're not closing that door. Does God speak about us having strong deja vu vision because certain events are happening where I feel like I'm getting closer? The scriptures tell you. Give me that in Joel. Uh, the visions, yes. Come on, you stupid computer. Oh, it's my fault. I'm sorry. I mean, I'll blame the computer. Joel chapter 2, verse 28. I need you to move quick. Joel chapter 2, verse 28. And it shall come to pass afterwards that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. The spirit of God has been poured upon us. That's why you're seeing new men, new women speak in a way that the world has never heard or seen before. Read on. And your sons and daughters shall prophesy. So we prophesy. We're all talking about the Bible on the level. we. When I was growing up, I wasn't talking about no damn Bible. I don't want to hear nothing about no God. Now you're seeing an immense amount of people talk about in a, the Bible in a way that you've never seen. Because God's spirit has been poured out upon us. Read on. Your old men shall dream dreams. People are having dreams now. Read on. Your young men shall see visions. Now people are having visions of things that they never seen before. That's the hand of God. Read on. And also upon the servants and upon the handmaids. The women also, read on. In those days will I pour out my spirit. The spirit coming on y'all also. We, see, we got devout sisters that's helping us out, holding us down, caring about us, praying for us, making sure we got what we want. We ain't never seen that before. What verse is that? Okay, so yes, the visions are, are of God. The deja vu, as you're calling it, is, is spiritual. Don't put the Countess Gamble, don't put your personal question here. Because you got evil people on here that's watching what we're doing. You can email me. Don't put personal stuff here. Uh, whatever we love before Christ will be destroyed. That's right. That's why Christ says uh, you got to lose your life for his sake. You got to give it up. I'm not telling you do this and you'll keep your job. Do this and, and you won't know. I'm telling you Satan is coming down with great wrath. You're going to take some losses. But you have to believe that whatever is taken from you in this world that will be restored to you when God gives us this kingdom. My mother knows the truth, but she chose to be a Christian. Then she don't know the truth. She does not know the truth. She's heard about it, but she don't know it. Now she has a stroke and is killing me for she always provoked me. What should I do? There's nothing you could do for her. She has to repent. Give me that in Ezekiel chapter 14 verse 12. Get that quickly. Uh, Revelation 12 and 4. What does the third stars do? Remember, the 12 stars are the Israelites. And we went into captivity in two separate parts. Judah, Benjamin, and Levi is the third part when we fell. The other tribes went into captivity before us. We went in as two separate captivities. The Bible refers to us as Judah for Judah, Benjamin, and Levi, and Israel for the other tribes. Ezekiel chapter 14, verse 12. The word of the Lord came again to me, saying, Son of man, when the land sinneth against me. Like we did. When the land sins like we did. Read on. By trespassing grievously. When we grievously break God's laws, I want you to read quicker. 
Then will I stretch out mine hand upon it. God brings judgment on us. Read on. And I will break the staff of the bread. Whatever thereof. sustains us, he's going to break and take. You're going to lose your job. You're going to lose where you live. You're going to fall behind on your rent. God gives Satan orders to mess up their life. Read on. And will send famine upon it. And will cut off man and beast from it. Through these three men, Noah, Daniel, and Job were in it. Three righteous men experienced this. Read on. They should deliver, but their own souls by the righteousness, said the Lord God. So you can only deliver your soul by your righteousness. If my family decides they don't want to keep the commandments, there's nothing I could do for them. So I don't put my mind into, oh, my mother, my this, my father, my brother. I don't care. I already told them what the Bible says, and they don't want to listen. Let them die. There's nothing I could do. The Bible says, though these three men, Noah, Job, and Daniel were in it, they cannot deliver anybody. You can only be delivered by your own righteousness. I tell my kids the same thing. You don't want to listen to God, you're going to die, and God is going to give me new kids. It's plain and simple. Woman, you don't want to listen to God, you're going to die, and God is going to give me a new wife. Plain and simple. I'm not here to sugarcoat nothing for you. Oh, where we at? Where we at? Where we at? Where we at? These are environed about with 13 ways or degrees of mercy. As Lily has stirred, I have no clue what you're writing. No clue. I don't understand nothing you're writing. Thank you for, huh? I don't know. That's just, I, I don't know what that is. If it makes sense, you, you read it. Thank you for your explanation. A lot of times when I pray, I ask the Lord if I'm still worthy to allow me to die in this truth. Yes, keep that humility. China, America, and Britain, and Russia have had a conflict these last couple of weeks in Southern. They're going to fight. And they're going to, the a war is coming that's going to be nuclear. That's how the fire is going to come from the sky that Revelation speaks of. The whole world is falling apart. The whole world is falling apart. And if y'all focus on things getting better, you are going to die with everybody else. Deacon, what is the Lord least talking about in Deuteronomy? What? What does that say? Five and one? Get that? Oh, Sean Deacon Leadership, praises, all praises, Adina. Uh, most high in Christ, plus to you too. Um, uh, yeah, what it says. Deuteronomy chapter 5, verse 1. And Moses called all Israel and said unto them, Hear, O Israel, the statutes and judgments which I speak in your ears this day that ye may learn them and keep them and do them. That's it. That's what they put. That's self-explanatory. Do you think Christian preachers know the truth but are paid not to teach it? Listen, 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 listen. You don't have to pay these people not to teach the truth. You don't have to te pay them not to teach the truth. They're going to make their choice just not to listen to us. I don't know. I don't have proof of someone knows where the Israelites, they know Christ is black. They know the world is coming to end, but they're like, I'm going to live it up and get money right now and die with everybody. That don't make sense to me. It's just the people who God pour his spirit on and the people who don't have the spirit. I don't know of anybody who knows the truth. They know everything I'm saying and they decide, ah, I'm going to take the money. I don't, I don't know of that. Nobody could be that stupid. Do they? Could there be people like that? Yes. But the people who speak in the way I'm speaking, God poured out their spirit on them. I'm living proof of that. Because I was a wicked nigga from the street, and I love wickedness. I love being wicked. I love doing everything wrong. But when God poured out his spirit on me, that's the power of God. That's what makes me say, I'm, I'm going through this door here. I leave the wickedness alone. It's, that's temporary. It's short. I wasn't raised up in church singing in the choir and just so holy. I don't know nobody that's like that. I grew up around a bunch of wicked niggas, and everybody who I know was wicked. The only time I saw righteousness is when God poured out his spirit. 
So everybody else, they're all liars to me until otherwise. Thank you for this class, IUIC and Shalom. Happy Sabbath to the 12 tribes. All praises, Paul. Uh, Shalom, Nick and Asaph, where the deaths of Amalek at the Surfside Condominium, Vengeance. Of course. Of course. That's God. God is going to visit the earth with death and bloodshed. And that's what you're seeing. An epic event. I've never seen a whole huge structure like that just come in the United States of America and kill so many people. Slow deaths that the cameras are there watching body after body come out. That's judgment. The Lord is trying to, and letting a lot of stuff be televised so you people will, get, will open your eyes. He's letting things be televised so you can open your eyes. Block that person that Thomas Jacob blocked them out. I don't want to see no more foolish writings from him. Block that idiot. This is what I hate. I'm talking to you just writing dumb shit after dumb, just foolishness over and over. Go someplace. It's 3 o'clock in the morning, you idiot. Yes, the flood in Europe. Okay? I, you have never seen nothing like that. All them people that, that water come and drown all them people. You ever have visions given to you by the Lord? Yes. Death and the, before I came into the Bible, I would have bad dreams about running for my life and destruction coming. And I still have the dreams now. I still have the dreams. I can't tell the last time I had good sleep. I never ask the people who know me. I don't get good sleep. So when I fall asleep, people be like, leave them alone. Because I don't get good sleep ever. Ever. I stop telling people my dreams because it'll scare people. So I don't I don't talk about them. Did you see the South Africa riots? Yes, they tear that place up, looting nice malls. Nice, beautiful malls, the most the big malls that you would see in the suburbs. They ripping everything out. That's unheard of. Unheard epic events. I don't have time to post all the stuff here no more. So when I come, it's just to reinforce your spirit, your soul, your mind, so that you don't get snatched up with the foolishness that they putting out. Thank you. Lots of us are going through this with our families. All praises, Deacon, keeping it real. That's right. To hell with your family. God says he's going to give me that in Matthew chapter 19 where he says he's going to give you back 100. What is it like? Yes. And I'm not saying it to be mean. You don't think that I love my family and I don't want to see them go, but that's not what's got, got to be real with you. That's not going to happen. They're not going to turn around and just be like, we believe you. If they do, it's all good. But the Bible says your enemies will be the people of your own house. I believe what the scripture say, and I've seen it with my own eyes. Read it. Matthew chapter 19, verse 29. And everyone that has forsaken houses. You're going to lose your house. Or brethren. You're going to lose brothers. Or sisters. You're going to lose sisters. Or father. Your father's going to turn on you. Or mother. Your mom's is going to turn on you. Or wife. Your wife is going to want to leave you. Or children. Your children are going to be like, I don't want to do this no more. Okay, I saw a little girl who we watch here that we treated like our own daughter. She's a nasty whore on social media now. She make me sick. She leave here and just start putting all her nastiness on social media to shame her mother and shame her family. Tell her. Read on. Or lands. Or your line. Y'all trying to hold on to the line and it's falling apart. Read on. For my name's sake. For Christ's name's sake. Because we believe on the Messiah. We believe on our king. Read on. Shall receive a hundredfold. I want a hundredfold. Y'all can keep this garbage that they got right now. I want a hundredfold and what else? And shall inherit everlasting life. So I'm not holding on to garbage no more. I've been holding on to garbage all my life. I want a hundredfold and I want to live forever. If you don't want that, go someplace and die. This is not the place for you. That is so true. You can't save your loved ones. They only save themselves. A lot of you who you're calling your loved ones, they're there to seal your doom. They're there to make you emotional and get you killed. A lot of you are going to die from evil family members you don't want to let go. That's Satan's secret weapon. That's what we saw with Adam and Eve in the garden. It said that Adam wasn't in the sin. It said Eve was in the sin. But Adam was so in love, my queen, that he got kicked out. 
He got kicked out. God said, take your queen and get the hell out the garden, you dummy. And then death was introduced to Adam. That's the first thing you read about in the Bible. You dumb niggas talking about that's your queen. No, that's Satan's dragon machine. You believe that's your queen. Disrespectful, out of order, don't want to listen. She know that this nigga's thinking with his penis. So Satan is going to use her or anybody else here attached to you to destroy you. Uh, seen a woman go away from the truth because her wicked children. To hell, up. to hell with her. I tell my family straight to their face. You are not causing me the kingdom. I believe what the Bible says. Whoever I lose, I'm going to get back a hundred times more and I'm going to live forever. How many of you ever live forever? I'm waiting. How many of you know what it's like to live forever? So to hell with your thoughts, your dreams, your aspirations. My dreams is what the Bible says. This is my reality. I want to live forever. You want to be a wicked mother, father, brother, sister, wife, kid? Go kick rocks. Go someplace. Get out my face. People calling me all the time for their wicked kids, their wicked husband, their wicked wife. No, I don't. I, I, I believe you, you don't believe, and I'm not wasting my time on that no more. Shalom Deacon Asaph, happy Sabbath. Thank you for this wonderful class. It really hit me hard because it's something I need to work on. I've been seeing 1111 every day. What does it mean anything? I couldn't tell you. I see sixes all the time. I wish I was seeing ones, but I see 666 everywhere. Uh, Deacon, I saw you dropping some powerful spiritual bombs down in St. Louis. All praises. Uh, can you explain Second Peter chapter two verse nine? Get that. This is the book of Second Peter chapter two and verse nine. The Lord knoweth how to deliver the godly out of the temptation. That's right. You don't know how to deliver yourself out of temptation. God knows. That's why we put our life in His hand. There's temptation all around us, but what? Read it again. The Lord knoweth how to deliver the godly out of temptation. He'll deliver the ones that's living a life of God out of the temptation, out of worrying about taking that medication. Read on. And to reserve the unjust unto the day of judgment. And make sure you wicked niggas get burned. You're not escaping. So detach yourself from anybody that's wicked. Um, can you please explain Romans 1.16? Uh, God is telling us he's going to make us live forever and you holding on to your wicked grandmother your wicked father, your wicked mother your wicked kids that don't respect God to hell with them I told, listen I love the little children but as soon as my child tells me daddy I don't want to do this Get the hell out my face. Goodbye. Read it. The book of Romans, chapter 1 and verse 16. For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. For it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believeth. To the Jew first and also to the Greek. Why did he say to the Jew first and to the Greek? Because it's just like now. Before you found out you were an Israelite, you were calling yourself an American. You were calling yourself African. You were calling yourself Puerto Rican. You were calling yourself Dominican. You were calling yourself Haitian. At that time, most of the Israelites were following the ways of the Greeks. Okay? The captivity was the Greco-Roman Empire. There was no such thing as America or Puerto Rico or Jamaica or any of those names. Just look at simple history. The Greeks had us in captivity. They took us to a place called Helena and they Hellenized us. So Paul is writing to the Israelites that was following Greek fashions. That's why they took those, that history and they put it in the Apocrypha. The Apocrypha are hidden books of when we were in Greek captivity. When you read about the Maccabees, okay, they were forcing us not to circumcise our children. They were forcing us to break the Sabbath. They were forcing us to eat pork. Those were the ways of the Greeks. Y'all need to stop asking. Well, let me, let, me, let me be patient with you. You may be new. I'm sorry. We were, we've covered this a lot of times. 
We're past that now. A lot of you, if you're new here, you should go back and watch the beginning of my classes. Okay, so let, let me apologize. That's simple history that the church just didn't explain to you. Whenever you see Greek in the New Testament, we were in the Greco-Roman Empire, and the Greeks made us let go of our Israelite heritage and conform to the ways of the Greeks. Okay, that's why they have Alexander the Great or Alexander the Greek. He was the first king of Esau to force conversion on us. When you break a nation, you strip them of their heritage, language, culture, and identity. So Paul, he had to explain to them, if it would have been now, America would have been there. But back then, there was no place called America. It was the Greeks. Oh, where we at? We have to be hard like this because our family. That's right, Christina. That's right. That me, I'm at the point now, Christina, whoever don't like it can leave. I don't beg nobody to come here. I don't end class saying send money to, for help. Whoever don't like it can leave. Leave. Go someplace where they're going to tell you how much Jesus loves you and, and sing songs and, and, and lie to you and tell you this is your season. No, I don't see this as my season. I see niggas dying. You can I send you an email. My concern is personal. Happy Sabbath. Okay, I'll check it. I'm behind on the emails. It was a very, very difficult week, but I'm going to get to them. Is using sage and crystals okay? Nope, because that's taken to another place spiritually. That, that is of the devil. Uh, you're supposed to burn incense. That's what we did as Israelites. You know how long we'll be in the wilderness? The Bible doesn't say. Uh, maybe this is a bad place to say this, but have anyone ever seen an Asian person in an emergency room <laughs> other than doctors? <laughs> oh, gosh. You're right. How, many, how often do you see go into the hospital and you see an Asian person in the next bed next to you, unless they're real old? That's, that's a great analogy. Uh, Deuteronomy 15, word, verse 1, get that? This is the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 15 and verse 1. At the end of every seven years. The seven years is called Jubilee. Okay, they're not like the white man where they make you pay a debt till you die. Taxes follow you to your bed to your deathbed. Student loan follows you to your deathbed. God had limitations. You can only carry the debt for seven years. That's what it's going into. Just read it real quick so we can move on. At the end of the, every seven years, thou shalt make a release. Release and them of whatever debt they have, whatever servitude they have. The white man says, no, they'll keep you forever and take everything from you. Garnish, steal, everything. Repossess everything. Read on. And this is the manner of the release. Every creditor that lendeth out Lendeth ought unto the, his, Anybody his neighbor. Anybody you owe after seven years, read on. Shall release it. You got to forgive the debt. Okay, that's it. I'm not, I don't want to get off track. Oh. Uh, 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 slide that down right there. Right where the arrow is on the other side. Something about no in, in, in the middle, in the middle, in the middle. Right there. Oh. Uh, Okay, that's just a statement. That's not a question. Sean, praise for another great and edifying class. Thank you, Deacon. Happy Sabbath to you. All praises, Rita. Happy Sabbath to you also. Get the next question on top of Rita. We've been ignoring Facebook. Let me see what's that. Oh, that they just post a scripture. Does the Bible mention anything regarding our early family that we will see them again? No disrespect, but what does the Bible say? I can't find anything we were told we would... Be together in heaven. If they died in righteousness, you'll see them again. If they died in wickedness, there's no scripture that says that you'll be with them again. The only people that will be resurrected that uh, were pleasing in God's eyes. That's it. I don't think people really understand the reach IUIC has, how 
were you guys able to find our brothers and sisters in India? No, they don't. Uh, they don't have a clue of what our reach is. But they going y'all gonna learn today. Y'all gonna find out. Sean Deacon, I'm new. Found got out. How do I repent? My dad is from Sagali Nation from Gad, and now Edom is an effect of me. Just watch the classes. And a mom is, yeah, just, just. Well, understand, 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 understand. There's a lot of people who their mothers are not Israelites. Don't put focus on that. Okay, your key focus is learning the com- repentance is keeping God's commandments. So your primary focus when you come to us is to learn what you have to do spiritually to be pleasing in God's eyes. Okay, because you, the judgment day is coming. I think we should do a class on that. Yes. And when your judgment comes your way, you want to make sure that you're pleasing in God's eyes so you'll be delivered. Deacon is drinking spirits and gin okay. You can drink alcohol, just don't drink to drunkenness. That's a sin. And the Bible says a drunkard will not get the kingdom of heaven. What does it mean to be seeing the death, seeing death in the dream? It could just be God just scaring you. That's what brought me here. I go to sleep. And he's showing me death almost every single dream. Of course, uh, psychologically, he's preparing you mentally so that you don't you stay focused. Oh, uh, Deacon on time right steps, keeping that real is the only way to move people to repentance and to keep the faith in Christ by applying the law statue. Oh, crazy, Osias. Uh Who are the people who claim they can talk to the dead? I told a friend that's coming into the truth. It was next. Yeah, they're witches. And the Bible says that they're going to be put to death. Let me get that for you real quick. You got it? This is the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 18 and verse 10. There shall not be found among you anyone that maketh his son or his daughter to pass through the fire. Because... Back then, we would sacrifice children to gods. That's why you see it in the movies. Read on. Or that useth divination. Divi- divinations, witchcraft. Read on. Or an observer of time. That's t- fortune telling, observing times, telling you your future. Read on. Or an enchanter. Or a witch. Or what? Or a witch. Those are witches. Read on. Or a charmer. Or a consulter with familiar spirits. Or a wizard. Or a necromancer. A necromancer. People that deal with the dead. Okay? God is going to kill them. Stay away from anybody who does that. Deacon, I'm in Fiji. It is possible to get an IUIC package, meaning the book with the email me. Uh, Tom Deacon, me and my dad were about to start a garden. What laws should we focus on? Just make sure you get the right seeds. Well, you know what? You're not get, do the best you can because Esau tampered with all the seeds. Okay. Uh, why does the devil come on people? How to get him off? Because, like I said before, Rondu, his job is to kill as much people as he can, and the Bible says he's going to kill a lot of people. The only way you can get him off you is to keep the commandments. Hey, Deacon, I just want to say how much I appreciate you for bringing it out and keeping it 100 with us 100% of the time. All praises Avatar. Uh, Shalom Deacon, can I hang washing can I hang washing on the Sabbath on well, Kaziah you're not supposed to be washing anything on the Sabbath. It's a day of rest. So your laundry should have been done the day before. Moses said in the law you got six days to do all your work. The seventh day is not a day to do laundry. Well, other nations have immortality in the kingdom. There's nowhere in the scriptures that said that they will. Uh, I see so many black women burning sage because the black woman is wicked and rebellious. They don't listen. They're hard-headed. They're obnoxious. They're loud. They're stubborn. That's why God judged them so hard. You notice now, 
they're being exposed more than ever. They're being exposed more than ever now. The best thing for you to do if you're a black woman is to humble yourself greatly in the sight of God. Humble yourself greatly. It's looking real bad for y'all. Real bad. Are you allowed to go on dates and go out on the Sabbath? Absolutely not. Okay, in the Bible, there's no dating. You prove the person first. You make sure that the person is in the Bible. Listen, when you read in the Bible, we didn't send the woman out on no date. The man had to come and meet the father. That's why the scriptures say the father would give his daughter away. A guy just coming up to you, any guy that's coming up to you now, it is to take advantage of you. Dating never, ever work. It never, ever worked. Every girl that I dated, I never wanted to meet their parents. I never wanted to meet their father. Because I know eventually I can manipulate them. Give me that in a... Let me show you what happens to you. I'm going to show you what happens if, you, if you're in the dating world. Exodus chapter 22, verse 16. This is why this warning is here. The book of Exodus, chapter 22, and verse 16. And if a man entice a maid. What does it mean to entice a maid? We're, try, we're trying to show you our car, our jewelry. We're telling you where we work. We got our hair cut nice. We got new sneakers, a nice outfit. We put on our best clothes to entice you, to entice you, to entice you. We're not there about the word of If I'm there with the word of God, I don't need to entice you. Going out on a date, taking you to a fancy restaurant, taking you to the movies, buying you expensive wine, it is to entice you so I can pipe you. I got to keep it real. That dating stuff is bullshit. It's foolishness. Let's go out on a date. No, let's find out where you are biblically with the word of God so that the union that we have together, you're going to stay with me and not play with me. Y'all shouldn't be thinking about no dating stuff right now. You know how many girls are dated and then can push them off to the side? Because all they're thinking about is what restaurant we're going to go to. And he took me here and he took me to the water and he bought me flowers. And I don't know your name. I don't even remember you. You got to come out of that stupid, foolish ways of the world. That was the easiest way to get. Uh, you know how much fake things men do for dates? Then the woman think I just had a beautiful time. I remember when the bishop was teaching class, he was talking about Central Park. Only New Yorkers will know this. And there was a place, a restaurant called Tavern on the Green in Central Park. Very expensive, exclusive restaurant that I couldn't afford. You know how many women I took there that they would go back and tell their friends, he took me to Tavern on the Green because they wanted to sit around white people. You stupid as hell. Because I knew that was the quickest way for you to get you to let your guard down. Now, that wouldn't have happened to a woman that's like, look, I don't want to go on a date. What do you know about God, nigga? Do you believe in God? Y'all got to grow up in this truth. There's no dating in the Bible. No dating. That's why a lot of people leave the truth. They leave the truth. I don't know who asked it, Kimberly. I just saw the question up there. I don't know who asked it. I don't know. I'm, I'm, please don't ask me to, to uh, I don't want to apologize to you guys. If you're new, this is the way I speak all the time. Okay, I, 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 if you're new, I'm sorry. <laughs> but I'm just telling you, that's all BS. I dated so many, I don't remember the names of the women I dated. I just found out what restaurant they like, what stupid flowers they want. Uh, what, what do you need? Uh, I'll get you a babysitter or whatever. Okay, and that was the easiest sex that there was. Because all you did, they, they're looking at the physical and they're not looking at the spiritual. You should be past that now. Well, all the women that have been on dates and their lives are ruined. Only silly schoolgirls like, think like that. Uh... Yes, finish reading what we were reading, please. The book of Exodus, chapter 22 and verse 16. And if a man entice a maid that is not betrothed. She don't have no husband. How do I entice her? Because I went around 
her brother, her father, her family. So I enticed her. I found out what she liked, and I used it to make her like me. Read on. And lie with her. And eventually, I gave her the business. I got the drawers. I knocked the boots. Do they still say knock the boots? I enticed her, and then I got what I wanted. Read on. He shall surely endow her to be his wife. Why does the Bible say that he shall surely endow her to be his wife? Because of the realness I just spoke to you. All we want to do is have sex with you. So we're going to take you out. We're going to show you a good time. You're going to be on Claude 9 like an idiot waiting for the next date. And we're just thinking, how many more dates do I have to get before I could get what's between her legs? Y'all need to stop that now. It's just stop the foolishness now. Um, I told y'all, ja Janice, I was a nigga from the world. Y'all not, y'all not telling me this is gonna come as a shock to you, but I wasn't always this way. I wasn't always this way, and there's no new scam that y'all can run that I don't know. No woman should be going on no date. You should be finding out if this man loves God, so that he could take me serious and not use your vagina is your most precious possession. And you're gonna, you gonna, y'all just give it away and you devalue yourself. That's why Kevin Samuels is ripping you women apart. He got the highest views right now because he's ripping you women apart and putting you in your place because you're ungodly and you're worldly. And you want things that are not real. So I'm going to talk to you real. Um... And the Bible has it there. If a man entice a maid, how do we entice? Wine. Okay, well, whatever you want on the menu. Spare no expense. Garçon, what was? Bring me a bring me bring me a best wine. <laughs> okay, you got the rental out there. Is that your car? Yes, it is. <laughs> yes, it is. <laughs> okay, <laughs> whatever you have to do, the nice cologne, everything. Okay, and she's, oh, look, 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 look how he took me out. Look at it. Not knowing I already did this to 19 girls before you. Hey, 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 because I know the women are mad at me. Can we give them uh, 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 1? Since, since this, I know they're just so mad. <gasps> They're just mad. Okay, let's see if what I'm saying is, is, is fake. Let's see if what I'm saying, I'm making it up. You got it? What it says? Yes, read it for read it for the sisters that think that I'm being harsh and I'm just so mean. Read it. This is the book of 2 Timothy, chapter 3 and verse 1. This know also that in the last days. In what time? That in the last days. In what time? That in the last days. The last days is just before God is about to destroy this earth. Read on. Perilous times shall come. It's going to get real dangerous out here. Why? Read on. For men shall be lovers of their own self. Meaning they don't care about you. The men now are the worst. They are what? Read it again. For men shall be lovers of their own self. We don't care. Swoop with date. All I need to do is find out what restaurant you're going to, how much money I got to spend to impress you, and that's it. Dating is a joke. Now, it's hard to fake being a man of God. Okay, you ain't going to meet no man that talk the way I talk or the way at the men of, of Israel United in Christ talk. That's why the scriptures say out of 10,000, you're only going to find one. Huh? What what else more they need from that? Can we read it one more time, please, if they didn't get it? This know also. Meaning on top of everything you know, this know also. Read on. That in the last days. In this time that we're in right now. Perilous times shall come. Perilous means dangerous. It's going to be dangerous. Why? Read on. For men shall be lovers of their own selves. Meaning we don't care about nobody but ourselves. And the only thing that stops us from caring about other people is the word of that that makes us care about other people is the word of God. Without the word of God, we're trying to do just what the Bible says. Only pleasure ourselves. And you women don't realize that you got got until we're gone. 
If we work on the Sabbath, do we repent every time we work on the Sabbath? If we do, listen, just try your best to get it off. It's liars with and uncovering someone naked, both. Yes, when you lie with them and you uncover, it's the same thing. Uh, these days it's good to have a peanut butter and jelly sandwich and walk in the park. <laughs> what you're saying is definitely true, Deacon. We should definitely be willing to humble ourselves. The more we start doing that, the most high requires our lives. Uh, where we at? Where we at? Where we at? So, it's 4 o'clock. It's been great speaking to you. Love you, brothers. Love you, sisters. Whatever we didn't get here. Email me, and I'll see you next week. Most high in Christ, bless. And shalom. Wait, 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 wait. Before we go, now I see who posts a question. Ariana put, I'm upset. I'm not upset, just confused. How do you get to know them? If you don't date them, what you're supposed to know first, Ariana, is if they believe in God. If they believe in God and they're keeping the commandments, they cannot harm you. That's more important than anything else. If they believe in God, they'll have a job. They'll have a place to live. They'll take care of their health. They'll take care of you. They won't have sexual relations with you and just push throw you to the side. So what you're supposed to get to know about them is if they believe in God, because believing God makes you follow guidelines that a nigga in the street can't follow. Go ahead. Yes, 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 yes. Get that for her real quick. I think she's the one that wrote the question. This is the book of Sirach, chapter 6 and verse 7. If thou wouldest get a friend. If you do want to get a friend, read on. Prove him first. Do what? Prove him first. Do what? Prove him first. Read on. And be not hasty to credit him. You know why a woman is hasty to credit? Because he had a nice car. He took you to a fancy restaurant. He bought you food. He told you how beautiful you are, how nice and shiny your eyes were in the moonlight. And you fall for that stuff. But if you bring him around your family, if you bring him around the church, and you see what you can't fake that. If you make him wait and not date, then you'll be in a place of safety. Most high in Christ bless to you. Happy Sabbath and shalom.